Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson, along with Ken Woodard, and a capacity crowd here at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, where Alabama puts its number one ranking on the line again. But well, before we talk about specific players, Ken Woodard, this is one of the few times that we walk into, or at least I walk into a stadium and think only of coaches. First of all, Johnny Majors, not so young, highly successful at Pittsburgh, now trying to rebuild at Tennessee. Well, he's come this home, and the Tennessee field. partisans are very thankful for that. Johnny Majors knows what it takes to, to build a national championship. You know, he had one in 1976, and he's a former national coach of the year. He's putting it together. The observers at the University of Tennessee feel that he's recruited the best two classes in the history of Tennessee. Question today, is he going to be deep enough against the Crimson Tide of Alabama? And that brings us to the subject of Paul Bear Bryant. What can be said that has not already been said? 289 career victories, five times national champions here at Alabama, three times national coach of the year. Truly one of the all-time greats. Needing 26 more to surpass Amos Alonzo Steig. I talked to Paul Bear Bryant on the field before the game, Ken. And I said, how do you feel, coach? He said, I'm scared to death. I want to get this over. But I think he said that for about 35 years. We'll take a look at specific players and both teams when we come back to Legion Field right after this. A lot of people think that the Wall Street Journal will help a man get ahead in business. It can. The Wall Street Journal will tell a man every business day what is happening in business here and everywhere around the world. It can give you information, insights, and facts that you can get nowhere else. The Wall Street Journal has the world's largest staff of business news experts. Their job is to find anything that can affect you, your company, and your future, and report it to you. The Wall Street Journal delivers to you every business day all the business news you need, when you need it. Will that help a businessman get ahead? It can. And a businesswoman. Congratulations, TJ. Thank you. It can help you. Subscribe now. Get the Wall Street Journal delivered every business day for 20 weeks for only $22. Just phone 1-800-228-2200. We'll bill you later. That's 20 weeks of the journal, 100 copies for only $22. Phone 1-800-228-2200 now. The tendency is to talk about quarterbacks when you talk about football teams, sometimes perhaps more than we should. But when you consider that the Tennessee quarterback is the all-time leading ground gainer in Tennessee football history, when you consider that the Alabama quarterbacks are 1-2 in rushing for the number one team in the nation, we'd better talk about quarterbacks. Let's start out with Jimmy Streeter of Tennessee. Well, Jimmy Streeter's an all-purpose back, and he happens to be a quarterback. I think he could play anywhere on the football field. He can run. He can throw the ball. Uh, he calls an excellent game. A highly recruited uh, athlete out of Silver, North Carolina, and he really makes the offense of Tennessee go. Johnny Majors feels as long as Jimmy's under that center that they've got a chance to win. He's going to have to be under that center a lot today to hold off the Crimson Tide, who have not one but two great quarterbacks, but we're going to talk about one. Well, Stedman Shealy, who else could you talk about? He's leading the uh, Alabama Ball Club in rushing. Coach Bear Bryant made a rare statement about an individual. He said he could be the best wishbone quarterback he's ever coached, and that's saying a whole lot coming from Bear. I said something when we came on the air, and don't you forget it. This is one of the big Southeastern Conference rivalries in football history. Paul Bear Bryant says our problem is we don't have enough youngsters down here that remember how big this game is. It is a big one, and we'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. They're everywhere. Today's physical Americans. If you're one of them, there's a new cologne made just for you. Racket Club. It gives a man the physical advantage. It's like that terrific feeling when you know you're going to win it. Racket Club. The new cologne for men. It's crisp, stylish, exhilarating. Racket Club. Wear it. Wendy says it's my most effective weapon. New Racket Club cologne by English Leather. The physical advantage. It's the time to have that smooth and mellow feel. It's Michelob. Every weekend is really a little vacation at the end of the week. And doesn't that call for Michelob? Weekends were made for Michelob. Yeah. Tennessee won the toss. Alabama's Tim Clark will kick it off, and Gary Moore takes it at the 13-yard line, loses the football, and Tennessee drops on it. 
at about the 18-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Tennessee. And so Jimmy Streeter, number six, will be your quarterback. James Berry, 34. Terry Daniels, 43, your running backs. Your wide receivers, Anthony Hancock, 28. Phil Ingram, 4. Your tight end, Reggie Harper. Your line, because Tim Irwin is hurt. Sutton, Jester, North. Marin, Daniels. Streeter on first down 10. What they cannot do is turn the ball over. Second man through is James Berry, who gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is about all, where Brian Braggs made the stop. Gary De Niro, Brian Braggs, Warren Lyles, David Hanna, E.J. Jr., the front five for Alabama. Randy Scott, Thomas Boyd, the linebackers, McNeil and Clements, the corners, Wilcox and Harris are the deep men. Second down nine from the 20. There are today's officials, and I'll read them down in a moment. Streeter, second man through, and look at Mr. Boyd. Very quick, got James Berry as he hit the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and long, third and about seven. Our officials again, R.P. Williams, the referee, R.P. Hardy, the umpire, linesman Robert Gaston, line judge Robert Caldwell, Joe Delaney, the field judge, Billy Tease, the back judge, Running the clock is Rom Gilbert. Third and long. Three wide receivers out. On third down seven, Streeter back to throw. Throws, has a man wide open. First down at the 34-yard line. Anthony Hancock makes the catch, and Mike Clements, number 43, makes the tackle. Anthony Hancock has led this team all year long in receiving, and he's a super receiver. We get a chance to look at it from Jimmy Streeter's position. He runs about a 14-yard curl in. Streeter runs, throws on the run very well. Hancock curls in, makes a reception, and he can go with it after he gets it too. First down, Tennessee will have to keep the ball. They're very thin. It's a hot day, about 80 degrees, although there is a good stiff wind. First man through is the fullback, and that is Terry Daniels, and he gets out to the 44-yard line before Terry Wilcox comes up. Tommy Wilcox comes up to make the stop. That's Wilcox, 15 getting up, and that is Terry Daniels, who's been averaging a little bit better than four yards per carry. Eight straight years, Alabama has won this, what they call the cigar game. Coach Paul Bear Bryant hands out cigars to all, young and old alike, if he wins this game. Second down and five to go. The ball at the 39 of Tennessee. Trader overthrows Ingram on the far side. The wing back out to the left. The man reputed to have the best hands on the ball club. There's Jimmy Streeter. He is the all-time season record holder. He set that last year of 2,011 yards. And against Georgia Tech last week, he had 103 yards rushing, 96 passing, and he became the all-time career offense leader for Tennessee. Now a big play, third and five. Streeter still with the ball and in deep trouble. They'll have to kick the ball away. Now this is what Alabama does so well with their great E.J. Jr. on one defensive end. Thomas Boyd in there again making the tackle. Boyd is uh, Boyd is used to making that tackle first. He leads his team in, uh, in tackling. Here he comes down the line of scrimmage. He's trying to get that Thomas Boyd to go with him, but he won't go. He just stays right tight. John Warren will kick the ball away to Ken Coley, and he is kicking with the wind. Coley comes up, will have a chance to return the ball, gets it at the 32-yard line, and down quickly at the 37-yard line. About a five-yard return. And now Alabama, which has been averaging better than 43 points a game, will go to work. Stedman Sheely, the quarterback, number 10. Billy Jackson, 33. Major Ogilvy, 42. The halfback. Steve Whitman, 45. The fullback. Tim Clark with Keith Pugh injured. Number 80, the split end. Tim Travers, the tight end. Adelet. Bunch the tackles, Brock at Booth the guards, and All-American candidate White Stevenson at center. <laughs> Sheely hangs on to the football, turns it upfield, and gets across the 40-yard line and picks up eight yards on the play, out to the 45. Stedman Sheely can hurt you in so many ways, but he's an excellent option quarterback. They worried about him last year coming back from a 78 knee injury, but he has delighted everyone at the University of Alabama, and he looks sound. Roland James made the stop, and they'll mark it at the 44. And James looks over to his defensive coach to call the defensive signals for his team. We'll give you the defensive Tennessee team in a moment. 
Make it second down and four. Quick pitch back. That is Jackson. Jackson near the first down and may have it. While he unpiled, Steve Davis made the tackle. Number 57, the left end. Kenny Jones, 99, the left tackle. Carlton Gunn, the middle guard. Not much behind him as Steve Kluge is injured. Brad White, number 90, the right tackle. Brian Ingram, 84, the right end. Spradlin, 50, one linebacker. Pookie, outstanding, 44, the other. Jones, 7. Martin, 29, the corners. Roland James, another All-American candidate, 14. One safety. Bill Bates, 40, the other safety. And now the measurement. And it is just shy. Tennessee picked up a first down. Alabama has failed for the moment. You know, Jim, Roland James is considered by Johnny Majors to be the best defensive back he has ever seen. And he's, he's just made the switch to free safety. Played safety a year ago. They switched him to corner this year. An injury made him go back the other way. Now Jackson has got the first down with plenty to spare. Billy Jackson out of Phoenix City, Alabama. He is a strong, strong back. As a matter of fact, last year, he shared the fullback spot with Steve Whitman. 11 minutes to go. We're just in the first quarter. And there's no score. Alabama, number one in the nation, highly favored as Paul Bear Bryant looks for a sixth national championship in Alabama, playing today's game at Birmingham. First down 10 from the 48. Stedman Chile overthrows his man, Tim Clark. And I gave it to you when we gave you the starting lineups, but we'll report that Clark, who has three catches, today is replacing Keith Pugh, who had 13 catches, by far and away the most successful pass catcher they have. But against Florida last week, he separated the shoulder, and he is out indefinitely. Jim, an interesting fact, uh, University of Tennessee has played wishbone teams 12 times. They've lost 11 of those ballgames, but of course, eight of those ballgames has been to the University of Alabama. And there's that classic wishbone on second down 10 from the 48-yard line of Alabama. Keeley keeps the football, loses the football. Tennessee recovers in Alabama territory. It looks like Brian Ingram fell on the ball, number 84. And this is one of the situations which Alabama leads. In turnover margin, they are number one in the country with a turnover margin in their favor of 2.6. But Tennessee gets the Alabama cough up. Well, that's one of seven categories they lead in. and. Uh, you you just can't give that ball away at this at this juncture. Stedman Shirley is not used to fumbling that football. He's considered to be the best option option quarterback in the uh, Southeastern Conference for sure. Greg Pookie hit him and Ingram fell on the ball. First down in Alabama territory at the 48 yard line for Tennessee and Streeter goes back throws the ball down could be intercepted and it's up for grabs and incomplete back there defending was number 43 Mike Clements. Hancock, the intended receiver, as we look at it again. Jimmy Streeter's trying to hit Hancock for the whole load here, and he just ran a ran a street pattern, a streak pattern, and uh, he gets it up. But if he could have got a little bit further, I think Anthony Hancock can get up in the air enough to make that catch. Mike Clement made a good play. Second down. Phil Ingram comes wide to the right. Hancock to the left. Streeter went for the bomb. Now gives to the fullback for a couple of tough yards. That is Terry Daniels. And it'll be second down and about eight to go. Thomas Boyd, the super quick sophomore from Huntsville, made the stop, along with Gary De Niro, a junior out of Ohio. As a freshman last year, Boyd made the all Southeastern Conference team. And they say he is the quickest of the quick. Big third down play as they went for the bomb and then handed the ball off to Daniels, their fullback. What's third down? Streeter hard pressed. Flings the ball out here, intended for Daniels, and overthrows him. And Tennessee has not that golden, but certainly a fine opportunity. Go awry as they are unable to pick up the first down, get only two yards. And it'll be John Warren to come in to kick it away to Ken Coley again. Capacity crowd, Warren kicks the ball straight up in the air. It'll come down at about the 20-yard line, bounces, and takes a Tennessee bounce. Inside the 15 will be down at about the 12. Yeah, and Alabama Tennessee. will take over again. Tennessee's playing a lot more pro offense. They're putting both of those wide receivers to one side. They're splitting their tight end out. I think they're coming into the ballgame realizing they're going to have to throw against this Alabama team. The Alabama secondary is very young. 
and I think they're going to test him. A uh, period of sadness when we learned this morning, and later there was a moment of silence for Harold Red Grew, who coached the Crimson Tide of Alabama from 1947 to 54, took him to the Sugar, Orange, and Cotton Bowls. He died this morning. First down, Alabama. Stedman Sheely hangs on to the ball, and that's outstanding play by the right defensive end, Ingram, who moments ago recovered a fumble at the Alabama 48. A gain of two, second down and eight. I mentioned earlier that Tennessee has had a tough time against wishbone teams. Now, one of the things they hope to do is get those defensive ends up a little bit on top of the uh, offensive line a little bit more and make that quarterback make a decision earlier. Clark goes wide to the right. Edmund Sheely. It is Tennessee's ball. He had the ball go loose again. He and Whitman on exchange, I do believe, lost the football and looked like Gunn got it. Matter of fact, Gunn's got it. That's a big play. Now watch what happens here, Ken. I'm not quite sure. Well, it's uh, just a mishandling between he and Whitman right here. And this is what happens to you in the wishbone offense. You're going to fumble the ball. You've got to control it. Whitman acted like he did not put his hands on the ball or either Sheely didn't get his hands all the way in Whitman's gut. That's the second fumble. Gary Moore and Hubert Simpson are now the running backs for Tennessee. Second man. Oh my heavens. What a hit put on by Randy Scott of Gary Moore as he gets to the line of scrimmage and that is all Scott number 50 hit Moore number 33. Well again Tennessee has a golden opportunity and again we'll point out that Alabama number one in the nation as far as turnovers are concerned in their favor but they've lost two of them it looks like Randy Scott's been in their backfield gee whiz he comes up and hits him head on Streeter carrying the football he's not run with it yet today pretty good move there and as buried as he gets to about the 12 yard line it'll be third down and seven to go that was Boyd again recovering along with Jim Bob Harris number nine to get Streeter the all time career offensive leader of the University of Tennessee the volunteers four and one they've lost only to Mississippi State a wishbone team Alabama five and oh third down both Hancock and Ingram go wide left Streeter has room in front of him touchdown and he catches it and he did Ingram Super play. All year long, Alabama has given up nine points. They've given up six so far with 7.54 to go. Well, that was that pro offense I was talking about, Jim. And what they put those both, they put both receivers to one side on, as they started out, Hancock crossed in front of, of the other receiver, and he came back, and Ingram came back up the sidelines and was open. Allen Duncan in 17 for 17 and kicking the extra points Ingram to hold and the kick is good and surprise surprise Tennessee up to nearly three touchdown underdogs lead seven to nothing but it is still early here's a play from the from the back of the quarterback now when we started out Hancock came in front in front of Ingram Ingram kind of wove his way up into the corner of the end zone and he just waited for Streeter to deliver the ball wide open. Hancock, in effect, picked the defensive man off, Wilcox. And he almost dropped it. Alabama has kept itself in a hole. They have fumbled twice. And Tennessee has recovered twice. And it is seven to nothing. And now to kick off will be Alan Duncan. Alabama will try to get on track. They are an explosive team. Ken Coley will be the deep man. Along with Don McNeil, Coley number 11, and to his right is Don McNeil number 28. Tennessee and Alabama. Alabama with the longest winning streak in the nation of 14. Southern Cal was right up there with him, got tied by Stanford a week ago. And look at the foot put into it by Duncan. McNeil takes it in the end zone and will bring it out. Whoa, down he goes at the 14-yard line. 
McNeil is submarine as he brings the ball back to the 14-yard line. And Stedman Sheila and Company will try to do it again. Carlton Armstrong, 5'9, 199. He is the buster of that wedge. Had no wedge then. He only had McNeil to get and did. Well, everybody was concerned about Tennessee coming into this ball game being decimated in the offensive line, but I tell you, their spirits don't look like it. They're ready to play football. Clark wide to the right, and Stedman Sheely trying to get this offensive wishbone going. In motion comes Billy Jackson to the left. The up man is Whitman, the fullback, and he almost lost the football again. The ball squirted loose. Spradlin was there to make the stop, number 50, a linebacker. And watch how Whitman almost lost his football. Here we have the same play that Whitman fumbled on before, just flopped over. And he drops the ball at the end. Luckily, the official had blown it dead. Second down, five. Gray wide to the left. 7.23 to go, first quarter. Edmund Sheely looking for Gray down on the down and out, and he's made a fine catch. First down, Alabama at the 32-yard line. Roland James is over there with him. That is Clark. Beg your pardon. I said Gray, it is Tim Clark. Gray, by the way, is a third-string quarterback who will back up Clark as a split end. Paul Bear Bryant does that. He takes defensive backs, makes them split ends. He takes split ends, makes them quarterbacks, quarterbacks, defensive backs, moves them all around. As most know, Paul Burbank gets outstanding athletes and then puts them where he needs them. First down from a 32. Stedman Sheely has the time to throw for Clark again, and this time overthrows him at the 48-yard line. Covering was Wilbur Jones, the junior out of Brownsville, Tennessee. Out of the second down and 10. Coming in into this ball game against Mississippi State two weeks ago, Mississippi State set Tennessee up with the run and then then hurt them very badly with the pass. Alabama has seen those films and I'm sure what they're trying to do. Of course they believe that they can throw off this wishbone. A very difficult offense to throw well off of. Keith Marks number 82 has replaced Tim Clark as a split end and is wide to the left on second down 10. There goes Major Ogilvie. He's not handled the ball out to the right as Whitman the fullback goes straight ahead and picks up about seven or eight yards. Out to the 39-yard line. Whitman, the 6'3", 230-pound senior fullback from right here, Birmingham, Alabama. Greg Pukey made the stop. Third down and three. We'll see that all day long. They'll come at you with that fullback time and time again. And I think we're going to see Shirley put the ball up a little bit more as it looks right now. Clark is back in. 7-0 Tennessee. And the fullback Whitman tries to get the first down. Now, I don't know if he's got it or not. It all depends on where they mark it. Bill Bates, a safety down the bottom there, and it looks like it's going to be just shy of the first down. And that's what they marked it. It is fourth down, and Stedman Sheely, they're not going to take any chances. They've got about six inches to go, and Paul Bear Bryant figures, I guess, his team is given Tennessee the ball enough in their own territory. Let's get rid of them and try to get a break of our own. Roland James goes deep as Woody Humphrey comes in to punt the ball away. Humphrey has outstanding hang time. They seldom return the ball against him. Left-footed kicker. Roland James comes up. He's going to try to return it. Coming off this side, and right there's one of the most successful returns in the last two years against Woody Humphrey. Anytime you get more than two and a half yards against a hanging Humphrey kick, it's a big success. Well, you know, I'm so impressed with Bear Bryant's special teams, and I, you know, they play like pros. They, they come out there, and here we see Roland James make a great run. He, re he clean, uh, receives the ball clean, and he just puts some good moves on. The Alabama team's all over him, but super running on his part. Tennessee has its offense on the field again. First down at their own 37-yard line. They lead by seven. And Streeter hands off, and straight ahead goes... Hubert Simpson across the 40-yard line, and that's a good gain against a tough Alabama defensive line. Gives Simpson five yards before Warren Lyles, the middle guard, makes the stop. Second down and five. Tennessee is all hyped up. Ricky Tucker's coming as a right cornerback, number 18. Mike Clements is out for Alabama. Again, same play, and this time they're not going anywhere. That is Thomas Boyd with his arms wrapped all around Hubert Simpson. 
I tell you, anything comes up that middle, Thomas Boyd reads like it. That's his home, and you're not coming in there unless you invade his privacy. He's a tough, strong linebacker. Leads the team in tackles even before today, and I'd venture to say, Ken Willard, he leads the teams in tackles thus far today. Ball is at the 42-yard line of Tennessee. It is third down and five to go. And Street is going to throw for it. Has time, now has running room, and this fella can run. Going for the first down, he's got the first down and more. Dragged out of bounds and out of Alabama territory at the 45-yard line by Ricky Tucker. First down, Tennessee. Boy, if you've got to have a quarterback back there against a strong Alabama team, you hope it's somebody like Jimmy Streeter. Jimmy goes back, he wants to throw all the way. Now, Jimmy's not coming back looking to run. But right here, he sees he has no option. And he can take off, and he's moving out. Ingram comes wide to the right. First down, Streeter's come up with some big import, and there's a burst up the middle by Hubert Simpson. Gets down to the 40-yard line, and that is five and a half yards. And this is a surprise. We thought in taking a look at Stedman Sheely and at Don Jacobs and at Jimmy Streeter, the quarterbacks would be doing all the work. But the Tennessee halfbacks and fullbacks have been able to pick up yardage. Well, they're really running well in that offensive line, even though it's been piecemeal today, is, is moving them out. They really are. Second down and four to go. The ball inside the 40-yard line. Big hole up the middle. And first down, Tennessee, as Hubert Simpson burst down to the 31-yard line. Boyd and Hannah made the stop. Nothing fancy about this, Jim. It's just a straight handoff, then veer back against the option, I mean, on the veer offense. I tell you, Thomas Boyd was almost blocked out of the play, but he still comes back and makes a tackle. Tim Bill Irwin is out as right tackle with a bad ankle. They put Jester in there. But as, as Ken has said, a makeshift offensive line. But they have moved the football. First down at the 31 of Alabama. Again, straight ahead, this time Gary Moore picks up a yard or two inside the 30-yard line. And guess who? Number 90 is getting up again, Thomas Boyd out of Huntsville, Alabama. Well, we've got a long way to go. Three quarters plus two minutes and 50 seconds. But we'll repeat to you what we said Paul Bear Bryant said before the game. Let's get this one over. I'm scared to death. He knows what Tennessee and Alabama is in rivalry. And Tennessee, after all, is four and one. Second down, Streeter out looking, has a man in the open. That is Hubert Simpson. Simpson inside the 15-yard line to the 14. First down, Tennessee. And Alabama has been shocked here in the first quarter. Just great play selection, just super play selection at this point. He gets everybody going to his right, and he uh, sneaks Hubert Simpson back under. There he is cutting back under, and he just lobs it over. And Hubert Simpson, we've got a little foot race now, and Ricky Tucker's trying to get him. He just takes off for the sidelines. Tennessee puts both wide receivers to the right. Hancock and Ingram. First down at the 14. Streeter sends it the other way. Straight up the middle goes Gary Moore. And he bursts for eight yards down to the seven-yard line. And can you believe this? Behind Marin and North. North, at one time, defensive tackle moved to center. And Marin, a very, very strong guard. And they're muscling Alabama, and no one expected that. If you had to pick something to happen in a ball game when you just scored at seven points, you'd hope that they'd put it on the ground and stick it right down the other team's throat, and that's what they're doing. Second down and four to go for the first down. Straight ahead, first down Alabama. On the defensive as Gary Moore takes Tennessee down to the three-yard line. First and goal to go. And Alabama is going to call timeout. We've got that straight handoff. There we go. Byron Braggs missed him right there. All at that time was simply to move the sticks. Time is in. The ball at the three-yard line. And the Alabama fans can't believe it. And the big crowd of Tennessee people here are delirious. 7 nothing Tennessee. The ball's looking for yet another one. Streeter, touchdown! And I want to tell you, they moved that football. Fantastic drive. That's the companion play off of that straight handoff where he fakes a handoff and comes back up following the halfback. The halfback actually is leading for the quarterback. Alabama's offense has hardly been in there. They fumbled the ball away twice on fourth down and inches to go. Their coach has elected to kick the ball away. Tennessee has taken the ball and marched for the touchdown. And now Alan Duncan will try the extra point. Ingram to hold, and he hasn't missed all year. 
And there's a shocker of the year with almost three quarters to go at this moment. Tennessee 14, Alabama nothing. Jim. Coming up next week, North Carolina State at Clemson. North Carolina State last year lost to Clemson as the Tigers finished number one in the conference and went on to beat Ohio State in the Gator Bowl. Another Navy at Pittsburgh. I'll be there. Navy as of today. This is before the day scores over. Undefeated. Pittsburgh very much in the running for a bowl along with the middies. Michigan State, Ohio State. And if Art Schleister is not the best quarterback in the country, he's awfully close to it. And our other game out on the West Coast, Fresno State and the University of Pacific. All next week here on ESPN. In the meantime, right now, you're looking at a shocker of the week. Jim, I tell you, a wishbone team has to be very careful. You cannot afford to get too far down in the wishbone offense. You simply cannot throw the football that long in that type of offense. Either you've got to come out of the offense, or you better hold on right now. Duncan will kick the ball off. Temperature now well in the 80s. That is Ken Coley, who is deep. This ball will go what? Into the end zone, will they mark it, saying it comes out, or will they... I think that's what they're going to do. They might have said it went out of bounds and they'd have to kick again from a 35 yard line but they said that went into the end zone and some of the Alabama fans disagree with that call. Well we weren't sitting on that side but I have to say Jim it looked like it might have drifted over that uh, sideline before it got into the end zone. Well the ball is first and ten for Alabama at the 20 yard line. They've got to get something going. John Hill is now in there at fullback number 44. Mark Nix is in 48 Major Ogilvy is not in and it is Don Jacobs at quarterback and Haney number 21 the other halfback as Paul Bear Bryant makes some big moves offensively to shake up that starting unit they haven't done anything there's a quick pitch back and around the side for four yards goes Haney the sophomore from Rogersville Alabama who's been averaging 5.5 yards Ken Willard I know you looked over him, but let me just read some. Stedman Sheely averaged before today nearly seven yards a carry. Don Jacobs, eight yards a carry. Billy Jackson, five yards a carry. Haney, five and a half. Whitman, five yards a carry. Ogilvy, five and a half yards a carry. It's incredible the rushing of the number one rushing team in the nation. Second down and five. Jacobs with the football and going to be dragged down. As a matter of fact, he is smothered for a loss. It'll be third down and long. And Tennessee, and this comment has been used before about other teams, is fired up. Well, I tell you, Steve Davis and Craig Pookie, you're going to see them all day long. You know, you mentioned that Bear was making some drastic changes, but you know, Jim, as we've talked many times, this isn't a drastic change for him because one thing I think about Bear that's uh, very notable is the fact that he'll play everybody on that bench. Stedman Shooty has come back in probably only because Don Jacobs left with his shirt. Jersey in tatters after that last tackle. Third down and six and a half to go from the 23 and a half yard line of Alabama. Sheely back to throw in trouble. Down he goes. And Tennessee is playing defense, led by Steve Davis. And the Alabama crowd, a sellout here, is in a state of shock. Steve Davis, Brad White, Kenny Jones, they're all coming. I tell you, they can't keep them out right now. Steve Davis makes a good move here and he he grabs him first and everybody joins in Roland James if they get the punt off before the end of the quarter and they will James will have a chance to return this one from the 40 yard line out to about the 47 yard line works first down and that's the end of the quarter that's the end of the quarter a touchdown pass from Streeter to Ingram Streeter scored from three yards out. Here's the shocking score at the end of one quarter Legion Field Birmingham Alabama Tennessee 14 number one in the nation Alabama nothing. With Ken Willard, I'm Jim Simpson, Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama, the beginning of the second quarter. It's 14 to nothing, Tennessee. First and 10, Tennessee, at their own 46 yard line. Streeter on a quick pitch back to Gary Moore. Moore hops, one man gets into Alabama territory. Fumbles the ball out of bounds at the 46 yard line. It belongs to Tennessee. And this is where the Volunteers have spent most of the day in Alabama territory. Run out of bounds by De Niro. Boy, Reggie Harbour made a super block on that to let Gary Moore get out there. 
Wide to the right. Goes Parrish. And straight ahead, and I mean they're going straight ahead, is Hubert Simpson. That's enough for a first down inside the 40-yard line. And Ken Willard, Jackie Klein made the stop there, freshman out of McCullough. But I am surprised that the ability of Tennessee to go inside the ends. Well, you know, when you have a real quick defensive team, sometimes you need to go right after them because they'll kind of jump around the block. And I think this might be what they're doing. One straight ahead. There's another straight ahead. A quick opening burst. First down is Simpson inside the 30-yard line. And there's your quick opener. There is nothing tricky about that play, Jim. They're hitting people. They're going out man on man, and they're going after them. A straight shot up the middle. Tremendous block by the center north. And Simpson does the rest. And they'll hit you when you get downfield, too. Jim Bob Harris coming in there right at the end. Along with Tommy Wilcox. We're liable to lose our Tennessee and Alabama spotters if this keeps up. One surprised and the other shocked. Straight ahead for some tough yardage inside the 25-yard line goes Hubert Simpson. Down to the 24-yard line. And we'll repeat, 14 to nothing Tennessee, and the Volunteers are moving the ball and have second down and a short seven yards to go. Inside the 25 of Alabama. This is supposed to be a breeze for the Crimson Tide. They may yet win this thing. They are an explosive team, but it's no breeze through the first quarter plus. Streeter long count this time, and it's going to be buried. Absolutely buried. In there with him, number 91, Warren Lyles, and E.J. Jr., number 39. That's one of the few times today the Alabama quickness has overtaken Streeter. Well, they love to run that, what they call a counter option, where Jimmy Streeter takes a step one way and then comes back against the grain, hoping to get everybody to commit themselves one way. But with E.J. Jr., who's a super athlete and very, very quick, you're going to have to do a little bit more than that. A loss of nearly four, third down and ten. Daniels is in. Simpson has gone out. And the backfield for Tennessee. Third and long, and Streeter back to throw. Has to get it away, puts it up for grabs, and it's almost caught. Harper almost caught the ball. Tucker was diving for it. There are about four Crimson Tiders in the vicinity, and Harper very nearly caught it. Reggie Harper runs it down in a cross pattern, and I tell you, he almost comes up with one of the great catches of the year. He dives here, and it almost stays on the ends of his fingers. Very fine effort. And now a 45 yard field goal attempt by Alan Duncan. He has the wind at his back from 45 yards out. It is good. I tell you, they've got it going, Jim. Alan Duncan kicks a 45 yard field goal. And with 12.58 to go in the first half, it is 17 to nothing. Tennessee. I cannot sit here and think other than the fact that dynasties are made on games like this. Johnny Majors comes into Tennessee. They've been down for three, four, five years, and he's got a chance to change his whole program around in one Saturday afternoon in Legion Field. Well, I cannot help but think, Ken, what are some of the games that I've done for ESPN? Nebraska heavily favored to beat Iowa. Won by three points in the last five minutes. Southern Cal heavily favored to take LSU. Won by a couple of points in the last 32 seconds. Michigan, Michigan State. Should have been Michigan all the way. It was a three-point game with seven minutes to go. And now Paul Bear Bryant trying for his 15th consecutive win. The longest winning streak. Finds himself on the long end of a 17 to nothing score. But there's still nearly three quarters of football left. That explosiveness will have to come to the fore. Duncan, who just kicked a 45-yard field goal, will kick off for Tennessee. Deep kick. That is McNeil, and he decides to stay right there, a half a foot inside the end line. I think he made the right decision. I'm sure the Tennessee uh, fans down at that end would like to uh, take that as a moral victory, but uh, I think discretion is a better part of valor in that situation. Well, you know, there's a longtime friend of mine and yours who played for SMU, a great All American by the name of Kyle Rowe. Kyle Rote used to say, anytime you got the ball, in the end zone or not, it is an offensive play, and take your shot. Of course, he's a running back, so <laughs> he wanted to do it. It is Don Jacobs, along with Billy Jackson, Steve Whitman, and Major Ogilvy. Ogilvy has not touched the football yet. 
There is Jacobs running with the football, and look at staying home. He flips the ball out to Ogilvy, and James has to roll him out of bounds. I said Ogilvy had not touched the football, but he sure did there. Jacobs made a fine pitch back. The Ogilvy first down at Alabama for the first time moves the football. They're Jim, up to the 46. Jim, if that play looks familiar, that's the counter option. Only Alabama's running it. Don Jacobs gets out on the end, and right at the last moment, he pitches back to Major Ogilvy, who has a straight line to the end zone. He takes off, and only some great defensive work by Roland James keeps him from going all the way. Alabama's still in its own territory, but making noises as though this ball game is far from being over. Stay with us. This will be a beaut. Jacobs a long count. Finally hangs on to the football and turns it upfield for a yard or two as Davis got him as he went by. Steve number 57. White is going out of right defensive tackle for Tennessee and Charles Gillespie 75 of Spring City has come in. A gain of three for Jacobs and it is second down and seven. It was Jacobs last week who had 120 yards and seven carries against Florida including a 73 yard touchdown burst and there he is at quarterback now Major Ogilvy breaks into the clear well he's handled the ball only twice and has picked up a first down each time Roland James makes the stop at the Tennessee 40 all right here we see Jacobs make that handoff to that first half to Whitman the fullback and there's Ogilvy just following behind him with makes a fine block on Spradlin and he gets downfield for a 12 or 14 yard pickup. Bert Prout is told to come wider to the right. He is a tight end split wide to the right. First man through is Whitman the fullback and he picks seven or seven or eight yards and now Alabama is beginning to look like the wishbone team. That is the number one team in the country. They are moving the football. The drive started at the 20. Quickly White comes back back in at right defensive tackle. Now there seems to be some confusion in the Tennessee lineup. Second down and three to go. Long count. That is Jackson and I don't think he got the first down. It'll be third and short. Steve Davis leads the tacklers. Number 57 down at the bottom of the pile there. And getting up also is Spradlin, number 50. Jim, I think it's easy to see that the wishbone offense eats up a lot of time. And likewise, as I said earlier, you cannot afford to get down too far in a, if you're playing a wishbone type of offense because you've got to depend on uh, ball control. Well, if Carlton Gunn is very badly hurt or cannot continue, Tennessee is in deep trouble. Kluge did not make the trip. They've taken a freshman, Cantrell. From a linebacking spot, he's played some middle guard. He is the backup for God, and so they want him to be able to play in there if they can. However, we see Gillespie coming in, and Gillespie might take over the middle for Carlton Gunn, who's going to get a breather here. He looks like he'll be back. Well, I hope he is for Tennessee's sake. I don't know how much Gillespie's practiced at middle guard, but uh, he's listed as a tackle, and he's a big guy. I don't know whether he's ever had any experience there. Third down in the yard to go, reminding that ESPN has hockey for you. The United States Olympic team against the University of Minnesota. Right here on ESPN. Third down and a yard to go. For Alabama at the 31 yard line of Tennessee. Quick pitch back to Major Ogilvy, who's got the first down and fumbled the ball out of bounds at the 25 yard line. But it's a first down to Alabama. Bates ran him out of bounds. Ogilvy has now carried three times and has three first downs to his credit. Morgan, Olin, Ogilvy. Now you know why they call him Major. Well, he's got a young brother whose name is Riley Harry, and they call him Rye. He is on the ball club as a freshman. First down at the 25, 17 to nothing. Ball loose. <laughs> Billy Jackson is saying we've got it we've got it Jacobs recovered his own fumble I'm sure you can see Spradlin there that's the third fumble and the first one that Alabama has held on to 10 15 to go second quarter and it's 17 to nothing Tennessee Val Barksdale comes in to give Roland James a breather while he changes his shirt Barksdale an ordained minister outstanding back number 42 Second down 10, Alabama. 
First man through his Whitman. Ball is loose, and I believe Tennessee got it. That's the third they lost. That same play with Whitman riding him into the middle. They're, they're not get, making good connection there. White recovered the fumble. Here we have a different quarterback, Don Jacobs, making the same play. They cannot hold on to this football. That'll kill you. You cannot do it in a wishbone offense. Moved the ball from the 20 all the way down to the 25-yard line of Tennessee and lost it again. That was the fourth fumble, and they lost three of them. Straighter hands off, straight ahead. Goes number 34, James Berry, the sophomore out of Natchez, Mississippi. Gets the ball out to the 31-yard line. A pickup of four, second down and six. Never in our wildest imagination could we imagine Alabama turning that ball over three times, and they fumbled four times this early in the ball game. Well, one of those days thus far for the Crimson Tide. They're all by themselves at number one. Streeter passing from his own territory, puts the ball out here, and quickly they're calling for interference. It is Harper that says he was interfered with. It was Hancock who was farther down the field. Harper, now you can see him in the near sidelines, talking to that official, saying, I was held up. It's third down and six to go. Well, I think Richie might have had a complaint there. He uh, got kind of tangled up in the middle and had a couple of guys standing in his way. Uh, I don't know whether they were standing there or preventing him from getting out there. It is Paris that goes wide to the right. Ingram has not been in. He caught a touchdown pass. Streeter going to throw again on third down. Rifles the ball. It's up in the air for anybody, and it is caught. Intercepted by Robbie Jones. That's the tenth interception. Wiles, it looked like, hit at 91, and Jones, 97, came down with it. Well, Jimmy goes back, a straight drop back pass. And Warren Lyles, I believe, is the man who gets his hands up. He deflects it. Robbie Jones is man on the spot, picks it up, and, of course, uh, doesn't have that great ability to run with it, but he gets it downfield. I tell you this, Jimmy Street in Tennessee is not afraid to put the ball up in their own territory. That's the 15th interception. Alabama leads the nation in that department. Sedman Sheely is back in. Sheely all by himself. Look at this. Touchdown! How about that? Tim Travis got away from everybody. And Alabama quickly is back in the ball game. Tennessee betting on a running play all the way. Tim Travis, no one within 15 yards of him, is just floating down the field. He takes that handoff to Whitman and lays it up for Travis. Alabama quickly on the board, using a turnover of its own. Getting that ball away from Tennessee is Streeter. Pass was intercepted after being batted up. Alan McElroy was 17 for 19 with Humphrey to hold. Big point. No doubt about it. 9 0 3 to go. And it is 17 to 7. Tennessee leads Alabama. Alabama, a team that leads in rushing, went to the air for its touchdown. And that's only the second touchdown that scored through the air all year. Oh, Shirley fakes that little handoff to Whitman. He drops back, and uh, all the defensive backfield is up, and all he has to do is lay it out there. Travis almost stumbles before he gets to the goal line, but he puts it in there anyway. That is a 29th touchdown scored by Alabama this year. 26 have been on the ground. One was on an interception returned by E.J. Jr., and now you've just seen the second pass caught for a touchdown. Pew out with the separated shoulder. Has one, and Travis has added a second. Barry and Moore are deep. Barry 34, Moore 33 for Tennessee. And Tim Clark will kick it off. Clark, 17 to 7, Tennessee. And Alabama has roared back to get on the board. And now Tennessee will try to keep its offense going. High kick. Going to be taken by, well, who took it? Barry now finally picks it up. Mix up there. There's little or no excuse for that. Little or no excuse. Absolutely for not. You're standing back there with each other. One guy's got to take over. The other guy's got to back off. It's I've, I equate it to the example of the center fielder and right fielder going to get the ball. There they are bumping into each other. Nobody moves aside, so it goes through both of their hands. Barry has to reach down and pick it up. Now Alabama, having just scored a touchdown, 
they're fired up. They come down there. This fires them up a little bit more. You can turn the ball game around completely right here. All right, let's see how Jimmy Streeter operates here. You would think he would not put the ball up in the air. Almost a misstep there as Daniels takes the ball and EJ Jr. wraps him up after a gain of a couple of yards. All right, we can see a little bit of this tide starting to turn here, and I, that's no pun intended, but they are starting to turn because they're getting in the ball game a little bit. That time, Streeter and Daniels almost collided. A gain of about two, call it second down and eight. Again, we'll call attention to the fact that Phil Ingram is not in there, that Parrish is the man's foot wide to the left. Streeter straight ahead, handing off to Daniels, who gets out across the 20-yard line, where Hannah makes the stop. You know all about the Hannahs, don't you? His brother John here from 72 to 74, all pro with the New England Patriots. His brother Charles here, 74 to 76, now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And his dad, Herb, here. Back from 48 to 50, he played with the Giants. And this is the third Hannah, really the fourth, the third brother, David, hurt much of last year with a couple of knee operations. Third down and five to go for Tennessee, but they'll have to get the ball back to Alabama. Second man through, and he's not going to get the first down. That is James Berry getting out near the 25-yard line. It'll be fourth down and a yard to go. That was so quickly. It is John Warren on to kick the ball away, and the Alabama crowd, without much to cheer for, comes alive. They're coming alive on the field, too. That was a crucial series for University of Tennessee. If they'd have gotten that first down, they might have calmed them down a little bit. Warren gets a nice kick away. Coley has it go over his head and look at this bounce it gets for Tennessee. Inside the 15, down near the 10 yard line, they'll mark it at the 13. Outstanding kick. The line of scrimmage, remember, was the 25, and the ball is marked down on the 13 yard line. If I were Ken Coley, I think I'd hesitate before going over to the sidelines. He should have caught that ball. He could have fair caught it, and uh, I don't know why he let that ball go. It bounced for a 63 yard punt. And that can juice up a Tennessee team because Alabama's now backed up inside its own 15 yard line. Duncan, Stedman, Sheely comes out along with Jackson, Whitman, and Ogilvy, the starting backfield for Alabama. Stedman, Sheely turning the corner and didn't make it, did he? He wanted to pitch out to his trailing back, and unloading on him was Brian Ingram. Now, when I say Ingram is out, remember that is Phil Ingram, the wing back on offense, not Brian Ingram, no relation, a defensive right end for Tennessee. I think that play illustrates, Jim, how dangerous that wishbone offense can be, not only for the defensive team, but for the offensive team. Sheely almost got caught in the middle of pitching that ball, and there would have been another fumble. Second down, nine to go from the 14-yard line. Sheely's going to throw, and Clark is out here by himself. That's... Close to a first down. They are marking it at the 22. They've got to get to the 23. It'll be third down and short to go. Wilbur Jones ran him out of bounds. But Stedman Sheely, who had only thrown 35 times before today, has shown his willingness to throw it today, almost has to, and has thrown one touchdown pass. Wilbur Jones was way off of uh, way off of the receiver. He's got to get up a little bit closer. They're going to eat him up all day long. Third down and only about a half a yard to go. And Stedman Sheely may have gotten it simply by falling forward. Looked like there might have been a mix up. And Sheely almost backed for the first down. Well, I think that's exactly what he did. He got in the middle, and I think the Tennessee player actually pushed him for the first down. That's the first down for Alabama. Not a picture play at all, but the Crimson Tide will take it. Here we go. And I think he bumps into the. There you go. It almost slips away from him right there. And he says, hey, I better just fall on back here. And there he gets a little help. Ingram Perfect. pushes it. All right, first down Alabama, 17 to 7, Tennessee. Midway, well, six minutes to go in the first half. Whitman gets a couple of tough yards across the 25. And White, Brad White, a junior tackle from Idaho Falls Idaho has been outstanding today made the stop if you notice one thing Jim Bear is usually noted for running those backs in and out of the ball game and he stayed with that first string backfield most of the way
Second down, eight to go. Ball at the 25-yard line. Sheely, lots of time to throw. Now running out of time and running out of the group. And what a hit he takes. Picks up a yard or two. It'll be about third down and five. Jones and Spradlin came up to make the stop. Ball at the 27-yard line. They've got to get nearly to the 34 for the first down. Out of the third down. Spradlin coming out and Bolton going in. He unloaded on Sheely. Uh, Danny Spradlin is shaken up, but he hit him hard. Well, Stephen Sheely wants to go over and talk things over on third and long, third and seven, realizing that Alabama wants to keep this drive alive. 4.58 to go in the half, and it's 17 to 7, Tennessee. Well, around the world, they call it football. Here in our country, we call it soccer. And Clemson was ranked third in the country last year in the Atlantic Coast Conference. They haven't lost a game since 1971. Later on from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Clemson and North Carolina in soccer. Chapel Hill, is that a pretty place? It's a beautiful place. I have personal knowledge of it. Unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to play soccer there. I think I would enjoy it, though. Your coach when you were in North Carolina was? Jim Hickey. Jim Hickey. Here comes Stedman Sheely back. Your offensive line, Adelette, Brock, Stevenson, Booth, Bunch, Kraut, your tight end. Travis caught the pass for the touchdown. Sheely, Jackson, Whitman, and Ogilvy. With the exception of Travis, it is Alabama's starting unit in there. A lot of talented folks around the country preparing for this game. Many told me Alabama is the best team they have seen in some time in the collegiate ranks. Here it is, third down and seventh. Look out, Sheely gets the ball away. That is Jackson with the football, and he doesn't have a first down at the 29-yard line. And Alabama, barring a big gamble, will have to kick the ball away. Sheely unloaded to his safety valve, Billy Jackson, who gets it to the 29. You talk about misdirection. They had him going in three different directions there to get that screen off. Tennessee recovered beautifully to stop that play. It could have been a big one for him. Craig Buki back in there again. Left-footed Woody Humphrey with that high, high kick. Hey, look at this. Roland James at the 27-yard line, and he gets across the 30, and see you later, Roland. They'll mark it at the 31, but Tennessee has the football with 4 minutes and 14 seconds to go, and they've got the lead of 17-7. to Haney got down under the kick to make the stop. I can see why Woody Humphrey's balls are not returned very often. That's a beautiful kick. He gets it uh, with as much height as anybody I've seen in the country this year. Simply an outstanding day to watch a football game. I would think on that artificial turf with the temperature in the 80s, it's a little warm to play the football game. First down from a 31-yard line. Bang. Just back to the line of scrimmage is Hubert Simpson. Simpson has had a good first half in this football game. The touchdowns have been Streeter to Ingram of 12 yards for Tennessee. Streeter running the ball in from the three-yard line. Alan Duncan kicking a 45-yard field goal to start the second quarter. That made it 17 to nothing. And then a 33-yard play after Jones intercepted a Streeter pass from Sheely to Travis. And it's 17-7. Second down and just about 10 yards to go. Streeter rolling to the right. Oh, my, threw it right into the arms of number 47, Brian Braggs, and he couldn't hang on to it, and no wonder. It got there in such a short order of time that he didn't know it was coming. Jimmy Streeter doesn't look very tall, but uh, he's listed at 6'1", 167 pounds. And, but I tell you, no matter how what your height is, you've got to find yourself the passing lanes there. The Alabama team is doing a great job of getting their hands up. And Jimmy's got to move around a little bit. Alabama, with the interception today, has intercepted 15 balls this year. Streeter has been intercepted 10 times this year. Streeter back. Streeter looks. Streeter has a man out here, but it, unfortunately, it is an Alabama man, and he drops the ball. Jim Bob Harris, a prep All-American, a sophomore from Athens, Georgia, dropped the football as Streeter sadly underthrew the ball, looking for Gary Moore. Now, they were trying to sneak Moore up the sideline, and I tell you, Jim Bob Harris had himself an interception all the way and uh, just dropped it. Streeter has been on with a couple of passes, but way off with most of his passing today. 
Warren to kick the ball away. Coley is deep inside the 20. And it's going to be run to the sidelines and turn up field. And out of bounds. Del Marketty stepped out of bounds at the 28 and a half yard line. First down Alabama checking the clock. Three minutes, 16 seconds to go. We're in the first half. Sellout crowd. They play a bundle of games. I believe it's four they play at Legion Field, Alabama this year. The Crimson Tide seldom leaves the state. And I asked someone, how can you get away with playing seven or eight home games and only two or three on the road? The answer, we pay so much money. It's almost like coming to a bowl every time you play in Alabama. Don Jacobs in at quarterback. Sheely not there. It is Hill, the fullback. Ogilvy and Jackson, the halfbacks. There is Jacobs going back, unloading the ball, and has Crouch first down. Crouch first down inside the 45-yard line. The big tight end. They've got it cranked up. Tennessee's overreacting on the run fake, and they're coming up. That's the second time that that the tight end has been completely open. And I'm not sure if it wasn't the same play. We have that same fake. The roll back the opposite way. Bart Kraut just comes off the line of scrimmage and he's wide open. Wasn't against Mississippi State the only team that beat Tennessee that they shut down the wishbone only to have the pass kill them. That's exactly right. And Johnny Majors was afraid of that today and right now the passing has hurt them more than the running. The running game has definitely not hurt them as of yet. 17 to 7. You know to my recollection there has not been a penalty in this ball game. 242 to go first half. First down from the 44 yard line of Tennessee for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Gray is a wide receiver out to the right. Long count by Jacobs maybe too long. It is not gives to the fullback straight ahead goes John Hill and Hill rumbles inside the 40 yard line down to the 37 before Craig Pukey and Roland James two outstanding defensive stars made the stop. That's just good hard nosed football. That was just a straight handoff. And hey, it's man on man. And I tell you, if you've got to match somebody man on man, Alabama's got a few more of those play players to keep coming at you. Second down and five to go at the 39. Alabama trying to draw closer before this half ends. They're down by 10 points at the moment. As a pitch out bobbled by Billy Jackson. Jackson tries to get outside, breaks one tackle, flag goes down. You wonder whether it's clipping or face mask, but a flag went down. I bet you they were getting for the face mask right there. Ball on a 32-yard line, and if it is a face mask, it is Alabama that's walking backwards. But it looks like Carlin Gunn is upset. He is over there, and it is against Tennessee. All right, Billy Jackson trying to get outside. We'll see if we can catch the face mask here. There you go. He runs that hand up. I think he might have got his hand in there, but you know that flag was thrown from behind. Well, what did I say? There's not been a penalty all day long, and here's one of the biggest penalties that you could have in a march toward the end of the half with 1.44 to go. And that that's moves a big the ball penalty. down to the 16-yard line. Haney is in. Jackson goes out for Alabama. Haney carries the number 21. You would say that Alabama is going to go away with something out of this. That's what you would think. Gray comes to the right, crouch the tight end on the left side. First down at the 16 of Tennessee. Jacobs. Uh oh. Gray's lost the ball. Way back across the 30. Tennessee says they've got it, but the officials have not yet. And now the officials do. They've lost four out of five. Fumble. Oh, Alabama. God. Bates made the hit. <laughs> that that hitch got away from Gray. Well, you know, you have all kinds of speculation at this point. What was Gray going to do with it? Was he going to run it? Or was he going to throw it? Here we see it again. It's just kind of a... <laughs> he bobbles it right there. He just dropped it. I think it was... Uh, I, I definitely think it was an end around. The way it looked. All right, Tennessee leading 17 to 7, benefiting from four recovered fumbles. And the ball off to Gary Moore. And we've said it before several times, and we'll say it one more time, unless Alabama continues to do the same thing. One of the categories in which they lead is in the margin of turnovers, 2.6 in their favor, and they lead the nation. 
or should I say led the nation because they've given up the ball four times here. They've gotten it once back on an interception. Second down five. Look at this. Bursting for the first down out near midfield is Gary Moore. And Tennessee shows his life in their offense yet. And now Tennessee is going to call timeout. I tell you, Tennessee was uh, content to let this clock run out until this run by Gary Moore. And Gary Moore, they're playing off the linebacker. The linebacker sprints out and they block him out. And he turns on the steam once he gets downfield. Bill Marin and Lee North are doing a super job. And of course, everybody on the Alabama defensive secondary will come up and hit you. Tommy Wilcox, Jim Bob Harris. 39 seconds to go on the half, and you'd have to believe, if they're not thinking touchdown, Streeter and company are at least thinking, get Allen Duncan within kicking range. He's already kicked a 45-yarder to open the second quarter. And they'd love to get three more points on the board. In any event, the impetus, the old momentum at the moment is with Tennessee. Well, this coming week, the Kessler Classic from Greenwood, Indiana, for the first time since 1965. The PBA is back there. I hope you saw our coverage last week of the Kessler Open in Battle Creek, Michigan. What an outstanding match that was with Larry Love, seated fifth, winning every single match he had to take the $11,000 first prize. First down 10 from the 49 and a half yard line of Tennessee. 39 seconds to go. Barry and Simpson, the setbacks. And Streeter back to throw. Throws long. He's got a man out there off his fingertips. Hancock had his man beat. Would have been six points. Anthony Hancock will think about this the rest of the year. He was wide open. He had him beat. And I thought he had the ball. He's got super hands. He's a great athlete. Jimmy Streeter lays it out. Here he runs a post pattern. Straight drop back. Everything to gain. Streeter lays it up. Hancock out races him. Oh! Barely gets away from him. That ball is about the best Jimmy Streeter has thrown all day long. Second down and 10. Streeter hands off this time and straight ahead down to the 44 yard line goes Gary Moore. 25 seconds to go and they'll have to call time again. It'll be third down and four to go. And Jim, I think this is good strategy on Tennessee's part because what they need to do, they need to get to get a real fair shot at this. They need to get it down to about the 25 yard line and then they can give their their fine kicker Caldwell a good opportunity. Ball right now is on the 44 yard line and a shocker shocker in the first half at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Alabama favored by nearly three touchdowns to beat Tennessee. You never know what the second half is going to bring, but the score right now is 17 to 7. Tennessee, as Alabama has fumbled five times and given up four of those fumbles, and Tennessee has been Johnny on the spot. However, one of their touchdowns was a drive after a punt was not the result of a fumble, but Alabama stopped itself as a result of their fumbles. Now Ingram is back in and is wide to the left. He has not been in for some time. Third down, four to go. Street is going to throw the ball. Look out, coming in from the side. Safety blitz. Ball is knocked away, and out of bounds it goes. Now let's see what they call. Alabama, they must be giving it to Tennessee because Alabama's bench is very mad. Well, Alabama's claiming that his arm had not come forward. And I tell you, I think they've got a good argument here. Jimmy Streeters decides he better get going, and Ricky Tucker can run. Uh, he was he was passing. I thought his arm was in motion. I believe you're right, Jim. He was passing the football. And now it is John Warren to kick the ball away, and they did not have Ken Coley deep. There's Paul Bear Bryant with his famous pork pie hat. Coley now has gotten deep. Line drive kick. Coley takes it at the five yard line. Look at the pursuit of Tennessee. Wow, is that man a fast man? Downfield. Mike Kofer. Alabama now has two seconds to go. And I would assume they would run it out. Barring not wanting to put it up for grabs down deep in their own territory. The line of scrimmage, the 11 yard line, and time only for one play. And time enough to regroup at halftime. 
Well, we'll see what Stedman Sheely does. Clark is wide to the left. They're going to run it out. And that's the end of the half right there. Billy Jackson takes it. Well, there's one of the real shockers. It's only half a football game. They've got 30 more minutes of playing time left. But I'll give you the score. The University of Tennessee, 17. And number one ranked Alabama, 7. But you can tell the music in the background. I don't expect that you can, but it is the Tennessee band playing Whistle a Happy Tune. And are they whistling a happy tune? I'll let Ken Wood have his shot in a moment, but Ken, nine points have been scored all year long against Alabama. Less than two points per ball game. Tennessee has 17. Now, admittedly, Alabama stopped themselves with four lost fumbles. I think that was a big thing there, Jim. You know, I have to say that you've been telling me all day that we're going to have a heck of a ball game, and I told you before we came out, I thought Alabama was a great football team. They it, are. It just so happens that Tennessee's playing great today, and I think that they came in here prepared, and they want to show a lot of people they're back to stay, and uh, I'm impressed with the with the Tennessee offensive line. They were piecemeal, a lot of injuries. They're coming on, they're playing great football, and they're hitting people. You know, Alabama, to speak of them, they are a team that is rated number one, and so many people around the country have told me they're not only number one, but perhaps the best team they've seen in some time. And I'll go back to what Paul Bear Bryant said before this game. I'm scared to death. Let's get this thing over. None of these young kids here knows what it means to play Tennessee. And he said, and Tennessee knows. I think you made a good point there. You know, it was only a few years ago when the Tennessee-Alabama game was really a swing game. It could go either way. Well, of course, Paul Bear Bryant remembers those ball games, but nobody at Tennessee has been playing during an era when they were great ball games. I think it, it likewise in Alabama, neither none of their players. I think what Bear was saying, in effect, was, "Hey, Tennessee remembers, and uh, these guys better be ready." The Volunteers have lost eight in a row to Paul Bear Bryant and Alabama. They may lose again today, but right now in this first half, they are whistling a happy tune, and we'll come back to Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama, in just a moment. Mark Wilson has followed the tradition of outstanding quarterbacks at Brigham Young University. His excellence on the field and in the classroom is typical of what today's student athlete represents. Leadership, dedication, teamwork, a concern for the future. Mark's experience at BYU is an exciting example of college football's role in preparing productive citizens. Football at Brigham Young is an important part of my life. But just the opportunity to participate in sports is more exciting than all the publicity and glory that go along with it. Drugs have become too important in the lives of many young people. If the time and effort wasted on drugs were put into sports participation, many of these confused youth would become happier and more productive. Looking for a challenge? I gave sports a try. Why don't you? Get high on sports, not drugs. Jim Simpson with Ken Willard, Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. And here comes the pride of the Crimson Tide, their band. And let us, along with the capacity crowd here, enjoy the University of Alabama marching band. And I'm sure they will entertain well, trying to forget for the moment at least that their team trails to Tennessee 17 to 7. <laughs>
University of Alabama Crimson Tide Marching Band, 17 to 7, Alabama Trails, Tennessee at halftime. We'll come back with the statistics and look forward to the second half kickoff in just a moment. This is my friend Emilio. I remember about 10 years ago. When he was working at the factory, he used to say to me, you know, Miguel, someday I want to be my own boss, own my own business. But when you got a large family like Emilio, try to save some money. Man, it's hard, I know. So it was a good idea when he asked the man he worked for and found out about the federal savings plan. Just what Emilio needed. This way, a few dollars from his paycheck went into the plan every week. And soon those savings bonds start piling up. It's a good feeling when a man works hard for years and finally gets what he wants. Like Emilio, all you need is a little luck, a little plan, and a good dream. Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama, and a shock of a first half. And here are the statistics, Ken Willard. Well, Tennessee is dominating the ball game to an extent, but not to the extent of that score. 111 yards to 88. Yards passing, Alabama 83 to Tennessee's 38. Total yards only 149 and 171 for Alabama. That is surprising to me. But the big, the big crucial thing is the, uh, is the turnovers. Seven turnovers, six fumbles by Alabama, four of them lost to Tennessee. That's the major story here, Jim. Well, we were saying four out of five fumbles, but we found that when Jacobs had a little difficulty bobbling the ball and fell on it, that statistically was a fumble, so they've lost four out of six. The big story is, of course, that the second fumble set up the first Tennessee touchdown, and Streeter found Ingram for 12 yards of the score midway in the first quarter. And then after a march after a punt, Streeter went in from three yards out, and surprisingly was 14 to nothing at the quarter. Beginning the second quarter, a 45-yard field goal by Allen Duncan. 17 to nothing, Tennessee. And then White recovered a fumble at the 25-yard line. It went for naught. And then Jones intercepted another Tennessee ball, this time at the 33. And then they got something going. Stedman Sheely on first down. It travels for 33 yards of the score. And that's how the half ended. 17 to 7, Tennessee. That's the nation's number one band of the nation's number one football team on the school. But the ranking of the football team is in jeopardy. We'll find out when the second half begins after this pause from Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. Ready for a video cassette recorder? Magnavox is ready for you with up to six hours of recording for a cassette. This TouchTune model lets you choose the TV shows you want to record up to one week in advance. Portable recorders and cameras, too. So now you can record just about anything, anywhere, and in color. If you're ready for your video recorder, nobody is more ready than Magnavox. We make staying home fun. 
Once again, there's a feeling inside of me, nothing new. I felt it before. There's a Hilton waiting somewhere along the way. Cause there's places that I've never been to. Sunsets to be ridden into. Not a lot I can do but give in to the drifter in me. When there's a drifter in you, there's no place like Hilton. There's no place like Hilton. Jim Simpson along with Ken Willard. We're at Legion Field in Alabama and Tennessee's Johnny Majors. His team has a 17 to 7 lead, but his volunteers have to kick off to the University of Alabama led by Paul Bear Bryant. Boy, what statistics his teams have. Back through 1971, the Bear has just been something else again. The last 14 games they have won in a row. Back through 1971 and the Crimson Tide standings. 198 wins, 38 losses, and eight ties for Paul Bear Bryant. That's at Alabama in 22 years, and through 71, he's been almost unbeatable. Kicking off will be Alan Duncan, who has a 45-yard field goal to his credit, gets some foot into this, and it's going to be McNeil at the four-yard line. McNeil trying to get outside. Hey, it's played well over there by the Tennessee defense. They stayed at home, and it was Lamont Holt who made the stop. But Alabama's got the football. They've spotted Tennessee 10 points as we begin the second half. Let's see if they bring out Stedman Sheely, number 10, Billy Jackson, 33, Steve Whitman, 45, Major Ogilvy, 42. That's what they do. Tim Clark, 80, the split end. Tim Travis, 88, the tight end. Adelaide and Bunch, the tackles. Rock and Booth, the guards, and White Stevenson at center. Quick pitch back to Billy Jackson. Jackson is ridden down on a fine tackle as he gets to the 18-yard line by Greg Pukki, the linebacker, and that's going to be about a yard gain and no more. But I tell you, Tennessee doesn't come out anything but fired up. They're, they're as excited as they were to start the ball game. Craig Pukki gets over and unloads on Billy Jackson. Call it no gain. Steve Davis, Kenny Jones, Carlton Gunn, Brad White, Brian Ingram, Danny Spradlin, Craig Pukki, Wilbert Jones, Danny Martin, Roland James, and Bill Bates. The defense for Tennessee. Second down and 10 to go. Sheely still with the football, throwing it downfield, intended for Clark, and it is intercepted. Taken away by number 29, Danny Martin. Across the 50, the 40, and steps out of bounds as he hits to the 40, the 34-yard line. Make it the 33, and there's yet another turnover. One great play by Danny Martin. Just a, just a fine play. Trying to hit Clark long to get the, get back in the ball game. Shirley puts it up. Martin just makes a, a great interception here. Doesn't look like he knows he has it right now. Takes it away, now starts back up. Roland James helps him out, and he's off to the races. That's the fifth turnover for Alabama today. Oh, they've lost the football again. Battle for it, and I believe Alabama's got it. That's who's got it. Well, they turn it right back. Not even long enough to set the offense for you. Looks like Terry Daniels is the one that fumbled and Randy Scott, the linebacker, number 50, in your picture there, jumped on it. Oh, first down at the 31, no blood there, but five turnovers for Alabama. Haney is now in. Jackson is out as the left halfback. Healy's going to throw again. Oh, he's got Travis right there and can't hold on to it. And almost intercepting the ball, coming up from behind, was Roland James. Travis is the man who was all by himself with a 33-yard touchdown catch in the second quarter. I tell you, that's the third time in a row they've run that play. Maybe sometime we can isolate that camera on that tight end to see what he's doing to get away. But right now, what he is doing is he's slow blocking, as we call it. He's blocking down a little bit, then taking off there. Again, they're overreacting to the run. Billy Jackson has come back in. Roland James has gone out for Tennessee, and the defensive backfield, Barksdale, is in. Second down and 10 to go. Looked like a little mix up there. Stedman Sheely turns it upfield, and hello there, Brian Ingram, having an outstanding day. Stays at home in his right defensive end position, and levels it. You've got to be impressed with this de defensive play of Tennessee. 
they are playing up. They're playing their defensive tackles up on the ball a little bit more. They're getting across. They're making that quarterback commit himself a little bit quicker. Wilbur Jones comes out hobbling, number seven. And they brought in Peoples, number 18, Carlin Peoples, to take his place at the left cornerback spot. Jones, I don't know how badly he's hurt an ankle, but it looked to be an ankle. Lost the football again! Whitman may have jumped on it, but it'll be fourth down at the 38-yard line. I'll bet you the old story goes that you have to go to bed holding on to the football. Paul Bearbot's going to do something. That ball has been bobbling and bobbling, and that's just one they did not lose. That's the third or fourth uh, involvement of Steve Whitman in a fumble. Kicking it away is Woody Humphrey. High kick. Fair catch called for by Roland James at the 23-yard line. But his first and 10, Tennessee. And now Tennessee will come out, and for the first time today, we'll be able to tell you who's out there. They fumbled the ball away so quickly moments ago. Jimmy Streeter, number six, is the quarterback. James Berry, 34. Terry Daniels, 43, are the starting backs. But Gary Moore, 33, and Hubert Simpson, 32. I've seen a lot of action. We'll check that out for you. Harper, the tight end, 85. Ingram, 4, the wide receiver, wide back. Anthony Hancock, 28, the split end. Sutton, Marin, North, Jester, and Williams, the forward wall. And now the ball is thrown for an interception and picked off by Ricky Tucker. James Streeter has let that ball go a couple of times today. That time it was nowhere near anybody except the Alabama man. A now Tennessee man at his back to him, about three yards to the right. This is not a good pass by Jimmy Streeter. He's trying a little jump pass to Reggie Harper. Ricky Tucker just dies for the ball, but uh, Jimmy Streeter did not make a good throw at all. Another interception. That's the second for Alabama. And that's 16 on the year. Dan Jacobs will run things now for Alabama. And this is a great spot for the Crimson Tide to make it close. Twelve and a half minutes to go, third quarter. First down at the 31-yard line. Jacobs turning it upfield and has nine or maybe ten yards down to the 21-yard line. Ingram made the stop. Well, Bear feels like he can put either quarterback in. In fact, he plays four quarterbacks, and he doesn't lose any effectiveness. Don Jacobs can run that ball as well as he, he feels, as well as Sheely. Don Jacobs out of Scottsboro, Alabama, 6-2-180, a junior. The heir apparent to Sheely, and right now he's playing in place of Sheely. Second down, a yard to go. And off big fullback, he's got the first down. That's Steve Whitman out of Birmingham, Alabama. And Alabama has now moved within the 20-yard line down to the 17-yard line and begins to put pressure on that Tennessee offense, which in reality has done nothing since early in the second quarter. It has been Alabama stopping itself and Tennessee's defense stopping it, but the defense the offense of Tennessee has not been able to move the football Wilbert Jones is back in there at the left corner spot Jacobs keeps the football gets away in real trouble away some more still in trouble and finally down he goes loss on the play of a yard back to the 19 yard line well Don Jacobs really shows that he could scramble there because he was down four or five times it looked before he finally went down at the 19. He did well to get back near the line of scrimmage. Could have been a big loss for the Crimson Tide, but uh, he stayed on his feet, kept circling back. And one thing you can say about Alabama, they don't go to sleep. They keep coming back and hitting people. Sheely comes in and is now the quarterback. Don Jacobs goes to the sideline. Again, he has lost his jersey. Matter of fact, Steve Whitman, the fullback, doesn't have a number on his jersey. And they may call timeout right here. And do call timeout with second down and 11 and a half to go at the 19 yard line of Tennessee. As Stedman Sheely, the senior out of Dothan, Alabama. I tell you something about Stedman Sheely, aside from being a fine quarterback, he is the all academic Southeastern Conference quarterback, and he is in the top 1% of his class. He has won all kinds of scholastic honors here at Alabama. Now, Don Jacobs has his New Jersey on, number five, the junior out of Scottsboro, Alabama. Jim, is that a charge timeout because of the jersey, I wonder? I'm wondering. They took a look. It looked to me as though they didn't want the timeout, but as Steve Whitman lined up 
The official blue. I saw no Alabama man call for timeout. I believe it is. I believe if you ha if you do not take the player out of the game and in the, the referee's uh, discretion, that uh, could hinder play. He can charge the other team with a timeout, which could be crucial later on in the ball game. Well, field hockey, Springfield of the University of Connecticut, and I can tell a lot of people that don't know about field hockey say what? It is a very big Olympic sport, folks, and if you haven't seen it, try it here on ESPN. Ball is at the 19, second down, 11 to go. 17 to 7, Tennessee. 10 minutes, 50 seconds to go, third quarter. Whitman has a New Jersey. Sheely calling, handing the ball to Whitman. And he gets a couple of yards only, and that is Greg Pukey again. Ken did a, I should say, covered a Tennessee game before their first game of the year. And yesterday and again today said look out for number 44 you will see a lot of him well he made 20 some tackles against Boston College in a game I covered earlier and believe me this kid from Seattle Washington all the way to the University of Tennessee at Knoxville can play football Whitman again has problems with his jersey he turned and looked back at the referee and they're not calling a timeout here and his jersey's in the same kind of disrepair Jacobs pitches out to Major Ogilvy. Look out, this could be it. Down to the one yard line. Major Ogilvy seldom touches the football, but when he does, look out. Well, I want to tell you, Jim, I think I'd start letting him touch it a little bit more. He's a strong runner. And when he takes that option toss, he can go. He turned it and put some good moves on at that point. Ogilvy has carried the ball for 58 yards, and he's only carried the ball four times. Each time he has carried, he has made at least a first down. And now Hill is in there at fullback. Going for the touchdown is Major Ogilvy, his seventh touchdown of the year. And Alabama draws close with 9.40 to go. This set up by the interception by Tucker back at the 31 yard line. We are in a different ball game Jim at this from this point on. And now coming in. Will it be McElroy or will they go for two. It looks as though they're going for two. 17 13 so that a field goal can put them ahead. For Tennessee. Now Tennessee is called for timeout. Well, let's take a look at the replay and see how this worked here. Major Ogilvy. All we have is a high jumping contest at this point. He gets up, gets that ball up over that goal line, and all you have to do is cross the plane of that goal, and you're in there. Now it looks as though Alabama, Ken, is going to kick the ball. I think it's a good decision on Paul's part. He's got plenty of time to come back in this ball game. He's beginning to dominate the, the time on the clock a little bit, and uh, I don't think he could gain that much by going for the two points at this point. What well, has to happen for the volunteers and their fans is they've got to hold on to the football. They can't give it up as Alabama has given up itself too many times. Alan McElroy with Humphrey to hold will try the extra point. Flag is down. Kick is up and good. And let's see what the flag is all about. The officials keep on moving. on the play. There will be a brief conference. More than likely offsides on Tennessee. Legal formation on Tennessee. So what's going to happen is it's going to be 17 to 14 Tennessee as Ogilvy carries it in from the one yard line. 940 to go. And here we are folks. Alabama number one in the nation threatened down at one time 17 to nothing and now very much in the ball game with nearly 25 minutes of playing time left and it'll be up to Jimmy Streeter who has been intercepted several times today and more than several times has thrown four passes in his defense he hit Hancock on the button for a possible touchdown at the end of the first half and Hancock dropped the ball well, I tell you, Johnny Majors is thinking to himself right now, if you ever had a drive, have one now. They need to hold on to that football and get it upfield. Uh, I tell you, they they could in turn create a different ball game themselves if they can if they can get some points on the board on this drive. That is very at the upper part of your screen and more at the lower right-hand corner of your screen. 
as Tim Clark will kick it off for Alabama. And now, I believe they're going to assess for this personal foul after the extra point attempt. They're going to move the ball up 15 yards. And so now Alabama will kick it off from Tennessee territory. Well, Johnny Majors is saying, what? When they put it up that far, it becomes rather academic. He's gonna, at this point, probably the smartest thing you could do would be kick a squib, squib kick and uh, make uh, Tennessee knock it around a little bit. Well, let's see what the instructions that Tim Clark has. Four and very deep for Tennessee. Outstanding day. Wind is blowing from your right to left, so Clark, even though he's on the 45 of Tennessee, is kicking into the wind. And he kicks it along, and it is caught, and that's a pretty good play for Tennessee, as it turns out. They get a first down at the 32-yard line instead of perhaps back at their own 20. Well, you know, if Jim, if they were going to onside kick that ball, they sure didn't. Uh, they must not have told those guys on the other side of the field because they didn't act like uh, that left side of the Tennessee line did not, I mean, Alabama line did not look like they knew it was an onside kick. You wonder if it's an onside or whether Clark just hit a poorly squibbed kick. In any event, Streeter and company will try to get something going here. They need it now. The Crimson Tide is closing in. Streeter hangs on to the football, and he is hung on two by Hamilton. Wayne Hamilton, a senior out of Oklahoma, Florida, makes the stop. A loss of two, second down and 12. And you can see that pendulum begin to swing in the direction of the left side of your screen, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Tennessee needs a play here. You would think Streeter will go to the air. Nope. Going to run the football and pick up some yardage as Gary Moore gets out near the 35-yard line. That'll be third down. And seven to go. Braggs made the stop. Brian, a junior out of Montgomery. 8.40 left. Well, Jim, as you noted, the Tennessee has really been shut down since really midway of the second quarter. They've got to start picking up some first downs if they're going to get back in this ball game. It, this could turn completely Alabama unless they start putting some yardage up. Third down, seven to go. Streeter now forced to run, uh, throw the football. Look out, he not got nowhere there, and I don't know if that was a mix-up, a naked bootleg, or whether he had no one to hand to. Whatever. There was nobody over there but Streeter and the Crimson Tide. I think that was a mistake there. I don't I've seen that counter option before but I don't believe he wanted to counter option back in front back into the whole Alabama defensive line. All of Tennessee was coming this way. And now Warren will kick the ball away. Holy will get it. And Alabama will have a chance to march and go ahead for the first time today. Kick is going to hit at the 32 take a big hop to Coley at the 20 yard line where he gets away from some people. And down the sidelines and out of bounds. Goes out of bounds at the 30 yard line. But that Tennessee defense is being tested now. They've been on there for, well, about eight minutes in the second half, but most of the second quarter. Well, you and I were talking yesterday, and we said probably the thing that could hurt Tennessee the most was staying on the field. If it got, if the temperature got up into the mid 80s too much. And there, it's beginning to happen right now, Jim. Don Jacobs, the quarterback. Whitman is in there. Haney is in there. And Ogilvy. Well, I want to tell you something. Major Ogilvy is some kind of football player. His speed, when he starts for that line, I don't think he's gained less than seven yards yet. Yeah, I don't think you're... I don't think he has either. I tell you what, they, I would uh, have to wear him out a little bit till uh, he could show me that he couldn't pick up seven yards of crack. He's the one that beat Penn State in the Sugar Bowl on January 1st. Seven yard touchdown jaunt. Ogilvy now sets up as a slot right. Second down and short, and now hold it. Jacob says, I don't like what I see. Alabama's used quite a few of its timeouts here. They've only got one left. This is Chris Berman at the ESPN Sports Center. Sorry to interrupt the ball game, but just want to explain a couple of things to you. 
from time to time when things happen, uh, occasionally when you're taping a ball game, you do have a tape problem. Well, that happened to us. We just missed seven plays. Nothing happened as far as the scoring is concerned. Let me explain where the ball game is, is right now. The timeout was called by Alabama with 7.03 left in the third quarter. They had the ball on their own 37-yard line. They ran seven plays. They got into Tennessee territory. So now we'll pick up the action is on the Tennessee 26-yard line. Seven plays later, Alabama has a fourth and one situation, okay? Now let's go back to Jim and Ken in Birmingham. They'd be kicking into the wind, and it would be a long kick. So no kicker is out there yet. That's how far they've got to go. Fourth down a yard to go. They have been. They're waving him on. They, they're going to go for it. Ripping up that Tennessee defensive line until the last two plays. Fourth down a yard to go. Oh, he's got it himself. That's Jacobs carrying the ball. First down Alabama. Down to the 22 yard line. And they keep the drive alive with three minutes and four seconds left in the third quarter. Alabama trailing by three points, 17-14. A brilliant day in Birmingham, Alabama. Sun is out. Temperature expected to reach 86. But a breeze is keeping those who are not playing rather cool. Jacobs. First man through, that is Hill. John Hill out of center Alabama. And he gets down near the 15-yard line before Greg Pukey makes the tackle. Second down and four to go from the 16. You know, in the first quarter and the first part of the second quarter, Tennessee was doing the exact same thing to Alabama. They were just running the ball right at them. Alabama's doing that same thing, and uh, they're using Dwight Stevenson and Vince Booth and Mike Brock, and they're coming at them man on man. If Tennessee is to have a chance, their offense is going to have to do what they used to do back there in the first half. They've not been able to move the football. Alabama is coming on strong, and here they go with Jackson barreling down near four, first down at the 11-yard line. Billy Jackson, first down at the 11-yard line for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Right now, that Tennessee defense is tired. They need some help. They've got to have a big turnover. They've got to stop this drive. And if they don't, they've got to hope that their offense keeps them off the field for a while. Haney has replaced Jackson as the left halfback. Ogilvy, nine carry. <laughs> That's better than seven yards a carry. Almost eight. First down, riding is Hill, and he is stacked up. That'll be second down at the 10 yard line. If I'm not mistaken, Jim, that's the first time the Tennessee Ball Club has actually stopped the Alabama here in the second half without a game. On first down, Carlton Gunn was in there. Got them all stacked in there. Steve Whitman comes in. Tennessee might be in danger of playing the run too much, only to have Jacobs go upstairs. They've got Krauts out to the left and marks to the right. There's Jacobs turning it himself and gets down to the six yard line. It'll be third Jacobs. down and five to go for the first down, six to go for the touchdown. Bolden made the stop, the junior out of Atlanta, number 61. Now the yards down here are a lot different than the yards out at the 40 yard line. This is a different ball game. You'll probably see the Tennessee ball club go into a little bit of what do we call an eight man line. They'll bring everybody up a little closer and they'll play de defensive, the defensive backs rather, will play a little closer. Billy Jackson comes back in. There's what Don Jacobs has done throwing. We've got 14 seconds to go, third quarter. Jacobs pitches the ball back, Ogilvy. Touchdown. He can smell that goal line, can he? Alabama goes ahead with five seconds to go, third quarter. Fine run by Major Ogilvy. The stadium erupts. He now has eight touchdowns on the year, two today. Well, Alabama's going to be ahead 20 or 21 to 17, depending on this extra point. What now must happen is that Tennessee moves the football. 
It's 21 to 17, Alabama. And the good thing for Alabama, or I should say Tennessee, is that Alabama will have to kick off into the wind. The bad thing is Tennessee will try to get its offense going against the wind. Well, that's the only good thing that's happening to Tennessee so far in the second half is they'll get to receive that kickoff against, you know, of course, against the wind. But uh, Alabama has got it going. Tennessee has got to get it going. Their offense has been practically nil since the 45-yard field goal by Allen Duncan to start the second quarter. And they did move the ball out to midfield at the end of the, sec or the first half, the end of the second quarter. But other than that, it's been pretty slim pickings. Well, I tell you, I'm impressed with the Tennessee ball club. They have a lot of courage and a lot of heart. They're, they're going to come back, and they're going to put up a fight here, and hopefully they can keep that defense off the field a little while. Alabama has 14 points in the second half and six first downs. Tennessee has no points in this second half and no first downs. That is a telling statistic. Mary and Moore are the deep men as Clark will kick it off. High in the air. This will be Moore at the eight-yard line. Uh-oh. Finds a little hole and gets out across the 20-yard line. And now Jimmy Streeter can ill afford to throw an errant pass. He's got to get something going here. Control the football. Try to move down. Use up some time. But more importantly, keep his defense off the field and at the same time try to score. That defense is tired. We've gone through three quarters. And at the end of three, Alabama, the number one team in the nation, 21, and Tennessee, 17. With Ken Willard, I'm Jim Simpson. Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. It is now up to Tennessee as we begin the fourth quarter. They're down by four, 21-17. Streeter is thrown in the backfield. Wrestled down by Warren Wiles, the middle guard, number 91. Well, I tell you, this is indica indicative of the way that Alabama's playing. Warren Lyles just picks Jimmy Streeter up, and I mean literally slams him to the ground. This ball club is fired up, and the people are fired up. You can feel the momentum and the, the excitement on the Alabama side. A loss of three, second down, 13. Tennessee must get something going, or else they'll be kicking against the wind and giving the ball back to the Alabama offense, which has been rolling since midway through the second quarter. Streeter forced to the air. Pumps, throws, has a man over midfield. That is Harper. Harper first down, and that is what Tennessee needed. They're out near the 43-yard line before McNeil and Wilcox make the stop. Uh, Jim, this is a variation off the play they threw to Moore early in the game. They're getting Harper to delay and then sneak out. Harry drops back. Harper slow blocks, as we call it, takes the ball and heads up field. Same type of theory as they had Moore coming across earlier in the game. Now Tennessee bustles out of the huddle, feeling a little bit better about things. Hancock to the left, Ingram to the right. And Streeter on first down, and let's see whether or not number 74, Hannah, was drawn off the side or not. That'll hurt you. Yes, That'll... sir, he was. It'll be first and 15. Looked like Phil Sutton, number 67, moved. And Hannah, with all that experience behind him and his two brothers and his dad, knew what to do. Made contact. Well, R.P. Williams, the referee, almost gave the signal to the other side. And he realized that the press box was on this side. But it's first and 15. Jimmy Streeter, all-time total offense leader for Tennessee, number six at quarterback. Second man through is Barry. Got back to the line of scrimmage only, Gary Moore. They'll pick him up. Randy Scott. Number 50 is standing over him. Hannah was also there. Out of the second down and 15. You think Alabama's come to play? They are ready. Well, I tell you, after losing five fumbles, you wondered. Let's call that five turnovers. There was an interception in there. Ingram wide right. Streeter will be looking into the sun when he throws the ball, but his receivers will not be as they look back for it. Streeter getting out, firing the ball, coming back is almost caught by Hancock. And if he'd been able to turn away, nobody was between himself and the goal line. 
Jim oh. Bob Harris broke it up. Almost a spectacular play. They had a safety blitz here. Ricky Tucker was coming. Everybody was coming. Jimmy Streeter stays on his feet and eludes everyone and gets it off to Anthony Hancock throwing off, off balance. And for a minute there, I thought Hancock was going to come up with the ball. That's a super play by Jim Bob Harris. It is third down, and they need 15 yards. So they'll have to kick it back to Alabama. Streeter rolling to his right. Now puts it down here for Hancock, and it's off his shoulder, and he may have missed seeing it. Jim Bob Harris was back there to break it up, and McNeil was covering. That ball looked like it hit on his right shoulder. It sure did, Jim. I don't know whether that, I cannot see that sun, whether it's, I don't think the sun could have bothered him at that point. What could have bothered him, he could have been concentrating on the defender and lost track of the ball momentarily. Well, he's looking back Boy, away from the sun, Ken, and the ball, see, you can see the shadows where they are. You're exactly right. And the ball hit him on the right shoulder. Well, I'm trying to find an excuse for him. <laughs> John Warren kicks it to Coley at the 20-yard line. Wall is forming on the far side, but Coley can't get there, and it's first down for Alabama at their own 20-yard line. 12-25 to, to go. Alabama down at one point, 17 to nothing. Now leading 21 to 17. Alabama next week gets Virginia Tech at homecoming, and on the 10th of November. LSU at Baton Rouge and won't that be something to see that's going to be a big game and don't tell me this is Coley down here very valuable return man clear, Coley. Ken Coley well, he's done a good job all day with the exception of that one ball he let sail over his head that I thought he, he probably should have called he's done an excellent job of catching that ball and getting back up field ESPN glad to be in Birmingham Alabama he has been hoping that Ken Coley is all right, but reminding you that next week we have more football. North Carolina State in Clemson, Navy in Pittsburgh, and the University of Pacific in Fresno. And we would like to point out that Ohio State with Art Schleister will be on display against Michigan State. At Michigan State, aren't they a disappointment thus far this year? Well, they were, gee whiz, they were the number one ranked offensive team in the Big Ten last year, I believe, and... Uh, Lost to Michigan. They went out to Wisconsin and lost out there also. Lost two in a row, 21 to 17. And that's one of our big games next week. And it's always fun to see the midshipmen from Annapolis. They had a couple of the backs hurt today as they began their play against Virginia, only slightly favored because their backfield was hurt. Coley goes off. Let's hope that he's okay. But from Pitt Stadium next week, that's another one of our football games here on ESPN. Well, don't write this game on for Alabama or off for Tennessee. There's 12 minutes and 25 seconds still remaining to be played. Alabama's got the football at its own 20-yard line. First down. Don Jacobs in there at quarterback. Runs the football himself, and I wonder whether or not that was a design play. I don't think so, Jim. Looked like the ball bounced up in the air once again. It'll be second down five in any event. And I think they ought to put that one in if, that can, if he can make that ball bounce up there and get five yards. Georgia Tech scored six points against Alabama. Vanderbilt scored three. Baylor, Wichita State, and Florida all scored none. Tennessee has thus far scored 17 and led by that total as they began the second quarter. They no longer lead. Second down five. Jacobs. Well, he got a yard. Looked like he was going to be hit in the backfield, but Don can turn the ball upfield very well. Well, he certainly can. In fact, uh, Bear Bryant thinks he can so much that he has not played Stedman Shealy now for, oh, I'd say the first part of the, the second half he started Shealy, and he has not been back in the ball game. Trout comes in at tight end. Travis goes out for Alabama. On third down and four to go, and here's where Tennessee's defense wants to hold and get a hold of the football. Third and four. First man through is the fullback, and that's Whitman, and he's got a first down across the 30-yard line. There's one of those quick openers. Run behind Adelaide Brock and Stevenson. They just really fired out of there. White made the stop. First down at the 31, Alabama. Now, Brian Ingram's a little hurt, and he's coming off for Tennessee. That will be tough. Mike L. Kofer goes over that right end. Ingram has been an outstanding defensive end for them. 
You would think the Crimson Tide now will just kind of ride things out on the ground. Look out. It looked like they jumped offside. Call off or not. Jacobs hangs on to the football, and we have a couple of flags down. At one flag time, Hannah was drawn offside for Alabama. This time, I wonder if Tennessee jumped offside. But I don't think it's anything about uh, any doubt about it, Jim, that uh, Tennessee is. Uh, they're getting a little over anxious right now, and they've relax they've got uh, 10 minutes and 39 seconds to go in the ball game play your game and get the ball back sure they're only down by four points get the ball back and start moving if they can well you know that's what that wishbone offense does to a defensive ball club you get so impatient you've got so many things to watch and keep track of that pretty soon one guy takes upon himself hey I'm gonna end this whole thing right here and get that ball back pretty soon you start having breakdowns right up and down the line that's the fourth penalty against Tennessee for 40 yards in a ball game Alabama has not been penalized at all. Of course, they've lost the football five times on turnovers. First down and five from the 36. Long count by Jacobs. Fullback. That's Whitman. Whitman and the way Jacobs the reached in there, I thought Whitman might have dropped the ball again. Bill Christian makes his second consecutive tackle. I'll tell you one thing, that's the first time I've seen Whitman get stopped in the second half for less than three or four yards. Second down and uh, nearly six yards to go. A little bit less than ten minutes left. That jumping offside gave Alabama big luxury there. First down and five, and now they Jacobs keeps the football, pitches back out. Look out, here's that man again, Ogilvy, and guess what? He's got another first down. Across the 45 to the 46, where Kofer ran him out of bounds. Boy, it's amazing. Just when you think you're going to stop him, you've got a chance to stop him. They flip that ball back to Ogilvy, and he comes through that first down every time. Jacobs is running that, that play as well as anybody I've seen run it. It looks like to me he's waiting for the absolute last possible moment to get rid of it. The Tennessee ball club is committing to him right near the sidelines, and he's getting the ball out. Ogilvy in prep school was an All-American not once, but twice. 21-17 Alabama, first down Alabama at the 46-yard line. They've had a scare today, and it's not over yet. Jacobs pumps once. Jacobs puts it up. They'll have to look back into the sun, and he overthrows everybody as Marks runs into the defender back there, who is Wilbur Jones. Now, that was fine coverage by Wilbur Jones. Uh, you know, you, if you're a defensive back at this point in the ball game, you've got to figure that Alabama is going to control that ball on the ground, and they ran that little out-and-up pattern with Marks, and uh, he was stride for stride with him. Second down and 20 to go. Now, as you look at your picture there, you can clearly read the Tennessee numbers. May I tell you that if you're in the stadium, especially when the sun is out, it is not that easy. Tennessee recognizes it, but that's tradition in Knoxville. Those light orange numbers against a white uniform. Very difficult to see. Television makes it easy for you. Ogilvy starts in motion to the right on second down 10. Jacobs hands off to Billy Jackson. Lots of running room, and Wilbur Jones makes the stop on him. But it's a first down inside the 40-yard line. Jackson, down to the 36, and Alabama is rolling. And we have another injured Alabama man, but he's now up and walking off, and that is Brock. That's a big play for Alabama that time. Here we have the draw play. They have a little cross action delay, and Billy Jackson, who runs just down. like a horse, takes off, and, I mean, he's galloping. He could hurt you. Don Jacobs goes out. Stedman Sheely comes in at quarterback. Jackson is out, and Haney comes in as the left halfback. First down, Alabama trying to put this away and put away the memories of what is going on. Fullback Whitman carries the football. What Whitman, is going on right has been that they started the second quarter with 17 to nothing Tennessee and 17 to 7 Tennessee at the half. But since midway in the second quarter, it has been all Alabama. Tennessee had that big spurt. Second down and eight for the Crimson Tide at the 35 of the Volunteers of Tennessee. Ogilvy is out. And Jeff Fagan is in. Number 35. And that is Simon with the football, or Haney with the football, beg your pardon, and he's down to the 30-yard line. Where Jim, Jones made the tackle. Jim, I tell you, we, we need a, we need a, a, a rolling scorecard to keep track of the players. Those jerseys keep tearing off so quickly, and that's one of the reasons they have to keep them coming back in, in and out of the back. Look uh, at this. Backfield. Jacobs, Whitman, and Ogilvy have just now come back in. Leaving only Haney in there, number 21. Third down and three to go. 
Tennessee has to stop Alabama, has to get the football back. First man through, has not given the ball. Jacobs turns it upfield, and Jacobs has got the first down at the 25-yard line. Jacobs. Don Jacobs has been the spark plug today. And Alabama fell behind. Roland James made the stop. That clock continues to run. 7.40 left. Capacity crowd. Sunbaked here at Legion Field with a temperature well in the mid-80s. And no threat of rain. Marks wide to the right. Jacobs operating the wishbone at the 25, make it the 26 of Tennessee. Second man is Ogilvy, and Ogilvy picks up a couple of tough yards. Ogilvy, it looked like he got tackle. next to nothing, but winds up down at the 21 yard line, and it is second down and four to go. And it looked as though he was stopped at the line of scrimmage by Denny Martin. Watch this, this is deceiving. Well, he does look like he's going to be stopped here, but just tremendous play. Then he's Bradlin comes there and makes a great play, hangs on. And I tell you, they're hurting right now. They're really tired. They're they're down and they're uh, they're exhausted is what they are. Brad White, I don't know whether he's exhausted, he's breathing very hard, or whether he is hurt. Well, Jim, I'm looking at the Tennessee players, and they're all there. And of course, they're not excited right now because they're trying to stop a very long drive by Alabama, but they're they're down. Cantrell comes in and gun goes out at middle guard. Ogilvy now has 94 yards on just 12 rushes. Johnny Majors, outstanding recruiting years. Ken Woodard told you that. Knows he's young, knows he is thin. Has come in and given the Crimson Tide a real scare. And with seven minutes to go, it is not over yet. But it looks as though the pendulum has swung in the direction of the Crimson Tide. They lead. They've scored the last 21 points of the ball game and are marching right now with second down and five as Whitman gets near yet another Whitman first down. At right guard. Hanging on for dear life was Bolton. Stevenson, Brock, and Booth doing an outstanding job in the center of that Alabama line. Third down, short yardage Alabama to go. Travis, Travis comes in, Kraut goes out. You know, one good thing if you're playing a line, playing a line position for Alabama, hey, block straight ahead, block a guy over top of you, and knock him down. Third down and just about a yard. Be interesting here if Alabama's held, wouldn't it? But Whitman's not going to be held. He's got the first down inside the 15-yard line of Tennessee. And the Volunteers are beginning to wear down. 6.26 to go. Now you can see it. They're just churning on, picking up three or four yards of crack, and then making a big play on a second or third down to pick up the first down. You almost feel like it's it really is hard to... Uh, almost impossible to stop. Andrew Jackson called for volunteers to fight the Indians in the Battle of New Orleans, and then later on in the Mexican War, they asked in Tennessee for 2,800, and there were 30,000 Tennessee volunteers. And thus, they're the volunteers of the University of Tennessee. Jacobs, touchdown! I believe that was an audible, Jim. Well, that sure made it look easy. Right up the middle, spread them open, nobody around him. Alabama takes control. Tennessee gave it a good shot with 5.58 to go. There's still a chance, but their offense has not been able to move. Not lately, it hasn't. Alabama obviously going for the two. Whitman remains in. Haney remains in. Jacobs remains in. It's 27-17 now. Alabama now might be thinking about Let's not get that number one rating tarnished. Let's get a few points on the board. Going for the two. It's 27-17. Flag flies, and they may have taken too much time. That's what it is. Flag on the play. And that may change what they're going to do here. Let's watch it. Here's a touchdown. Jerry now, I really believe this might have been an audible. They probably recognize something down near the goal line that would cause them to split that offense. But Don Jacobs, whatever it was, whether it was an audible or pre-designed play, did a great job of running the football in. Alan McElroy will now have to kick a 25-yard point after touchdown with Humphrey holding as the five yards took him out of that two-point territory. So from 25 yards out, it only counts for a single point, and it does not count. And so it is 27 to 17, Alabama. 
And with six minutes to go, nothing is impossible. But we'll say again that Tennessee has to get its offensive act together. It has not been together in some time. And I don't think we're going to see this Tennessee ball club fold. The problem they have is I don't think that, uh, you know, they can stick with the Alabama fresh recruits right now, you might say, because Alabama has the ability to pull them off the bench in situations like this, and these guys are ready. The defense has not been on the field. There, Brian, trying to win number 290 in his career. The all-time record, 314 by Amos Alonzo Stagg. Trying for his 15th consecutive win at his 20th Southeastern Conference win in a row. And a sixth straight win of this year. And right now, looks pretty good, doesn't it? Gary Moore and James Berry are the deep men, and Tim Clark will kick off for Alabama. Clark. Whoops. Very, very short. Somebody's got to catch this. Free ball inside the 20. That is Daniels, who knows what to do with the ball when he gets it. And he's going to be wrestled down by number 23, Heron. Daniels returns eight yards. Heron, a sophomore out of Decatur. First and ten. High school All-America. There's Paul Bear Bryant. He looks a little bit more animated, doesn't he? <laughs> well, we'll go back to what he said before the game. He was scared to death. And as it turned out, he had reason to be. And maybe he'll use that as a point with his Crimson Tide players in games to come, saying, I told you so. Streeter gets the ball out, has to underthrow the ball as he was pressured in there. Center for Glenn Ford, number 25, making his first appearance of the day. Jim, E.J. Jr. is just a fantastic athlete. He came in there and vaulted the, the back who was trying to block him. And, uh, you know, Jimmy Streeter has to unload the ball. You know, we've not talked too much about E.J. today, but he's had five tackles for losses this year. He's had an interception return of 59 yards for a touchdown. He's blocked a punt. He has caused two fumbles. He has had four tackles for losses. That's the kind of athlete he is. That's just this year's statistic. Streeter looking and has his man at the 44-yard line. Hancock. And Tennessee comes back. Well, Hancock toward the end of the first half. Had a ball on his hands and dropped it. And here in the third quarter, had one go off his shoulder. But he grabbed that one and it was a tough one. It sure was a tough catch, Jim. It was a square in, about 15 yards. And Jimmy Streeter throws it in the right place at this time. Right there, makes Anthony go down and get it. Five minutes, 30 seconds to go. Tennessee going to the air. Streeter, he can run, but he chooses to throw and has his man at the 44-yard line. And that is Ingram. And that's another first down for Tennessee. Well, we're going to see a little aerial display right now. They've got five guys flooding that area. All the backs that way, all the receivers coming over that side. He picks out Phil Ingram right in the middle there. Again, keeping it low, Phil Ingram makes a great catch. Well, this has been another outstanding game, and we're glad you're watching it on ESPN. Collegiate football, Birmingham, Alabama. Tennessee down by 10, but moving the football. Reader on a handoff. Whoops. Hello there. That is Thomas Boyd greeting Gary Moore as he comes to the line. And a gain of two yards. It's second down and eight to go at the 43-yard line. Alabama does not forget about that rushing defense. They're always there. They're always around that football. Thomas Boyd, a sophomore. Very, very quick. Now Ingram and Hancock for one of the few times today both come to the same side. They've done it before. Moore goes to the other side. Streeter rolls out this way. Looking now. Delivers a football and there's a flag down. Called on number 28, McNeil. That'll be a first down at the 32-yard line for Tennessee. Unless it is offensive interference. Okay, you got a lot of pushing and shoving going around here. He's, he's scrambling around. This causes a receiver to look for a place to, to hide. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, over top the back. You cannot put your hand on the guy and dive over. 32 and a half yard line, first down. Check the clock, four minutes, 24 seconds to go. Jim, we're going to have some fantastic game here. If Tennessee can put a score on the board real quick, and they've got a chance to get that ball back. It would be wildness. And now Hancock and Ingram both go to the other side. And on this side is Harper, the tight end, split about seven to ten yards. And Streeter. They're pushing him. He gets the ball away for Ingram. It's going to be intercepted, I believe, and oh, then he drops, drops it. 
Jim Bob Harris dropped the ball, and Tennessee Ingram had the interception in his hands. I tell you, Tommy Wilcox has him. Jimmy Streeter puts one move on that I don't think he's going to ever see again. Wilcox had him mounted and ready to put on his uh, his wall. Look at this play. And Streeter's back, and he wants to set up right now. EJ Jr. almost gets him. Here comes Wilcox. And Streeter still gets it off, but can't put any force behind it. And Jim Bob Harris could have had a game winner right there. Second down and 10 from the 32 and a half yard line. Streeter, a long count, now drops straight back. And blitz to the safeties. Look out, there's a man there. Touchdown, Hancock. Wow, what a game. And a flag down. Back here at the 37 yard line. Hold it back. Hold it back. It's holding. Oh, what a shame. There's a flag. That is the second big penalty against Tennessee. Once for a face mask that move Alabama down in a position to score. And now when they have a touchdown, they're guilty of holding. And that's not just five or ten yards, folks. That's a big one. Takes them all back to the 48. 15 yard penalty. What a, what a horrible blow to the Tennessee team. Here we have it. They had the blitz on. Jimmy Streeter's back. Puts it. Lays it up beautifully. Anthony Hancock runs under it. Makes a grab. Nobody around him. Unfortunately, goes for naught. Well, the Alabama fans will love you for saying that. They loved it. But to make it a good game, Streeter dumps it out short, and Gary Moore can't hold on to it. Wilcox was really taking aim. Tennessee has been penalized five times for 60 yards. Alabama twice for 16. Third down and a ton. About 25 yards to go. And time really now is running out on Tennessee, barring another turnover by Alabama. Four minutes and five seconds to go. They've got to hang on to the football, but they've got to get 25 yards in two plays. It's third and 25, and I would assume that they would gamble for it, down by 10. That'll give the fellas a chance to win. Street is going to try to take a chance now, not being rushed this time. Has his man. Hancock caught the ball, fumbled the ball, got it back. And now it's fourth down and 12 to go at the 35-yard line. Well, I'm very impressed with Anthony Hancock. He really stays in there. He goes across the middle. Here we have the same. We see it again. Anthony Hancock running back across the middle. Makes a catch. Now, he knows he's going to get hit here. And he gets hit hard. Ricky Tucker comes up. Everybody lets him have it. He drops the ball, but he still has presence enough of mind to get on it. Hancock, a sophomore out of Cleveland, Ohio. And Aguilar, a senior out of Fort Dutchess, Texas, is coming on because Doug Parrish, a wide receiver, has gone off, obviously, with the wind knocked out of him at least. That is fourth down and 12. Streeter has called time. The volunteers have two timeouts left. And he's trying to figure out what to do to pick up 12 and a half yards and get a first down. As Tennessee was sorely disappointed, when they were guilty of holding on a long touchdown pass to Anthony Hancock. The game is over, ladies and gentlemen. If Kirk. Tennessee can get it in here, Ken, it still will be that wild ball game. Of course, you know, the downside of this whole thing, Jim, is now having to work their way back downfield. They're eating up a lot more of the clock, and there's no doubt about it. They're going to have to come out if they did score and come up with an onside kick. Now we see Harper come back in. Aguilar goes out. Streeter still talking things over, isn't he? Well, I'll tell you one thing, they have a lot to talk about at this point. Not only are they trying to find ways to conserve that clock, now they have two timeouts. And uh, they're not going to use any of those timeouts because they want to save it for that last possession. What they need now is 12 yards to get a first down, and this is fourth down. Final down, unless they pick up a first. I look for Gary Moore, one of the backs, to sneak back out of that backfield. Both wide receivers to the right. Harper split wide left. Streeter back. Has the time. Delivers a football, and it's... Well, there's almost triple coverage on Anthony Hancock then. Almost triple coverage. He had no chance. Thomas Boyd, Randy Scott. Everybody's on top of him. 
Here we see it. He's rolling out, trying to hit a Hancock all the way. Thomas Boyd, Randy Scott, Don McNeil, everybody on top of the ball down there. Uh, he would have had a miracle catch. 77,665 official attendance here. And Ken and I started out more than three hours ahead of time. And I want to tell you, we were in a traffic jam. First on Alabama, three and a half minutes to go. They have been in a football game today. But Tennessee, their biggest move came in the first quarter. A couple flags down. Looked like Alabama was not moving well at all as Whitman carried the ball. But if you want to get down to what might have been, Ken Woodard, if Hancock had held onto the football at the end of the first half, that would have made it 24 to 7 at the end of the first half. But he dropped the football. And then just moments ago, Hancock caught a pass, but Tennessee was guilty of holding. Well, of course, you know, if he'd have caught that pass right before the end of the half, that would have changed the complexion of that first of the second half. And, you know, you're, it's really hard to put the two together. Of course, Anthony Hancock is probably the, the best receiver on this ball club. I, I know Phil Ingram has great hands, but in, for my money, I got to go in a crowd and catch the ball, and I got to come up with a spectacular play. I don't think you can have a better one on your ball club. First down and 15 as Alabama was guilty of motion on that last play. Their lineman moving. I formation they show us this time and the up back and that is Whitman carries the ball across the 35. Whitman well unless Alabama scores again this will be the least yards. number of points they've scored all year and Tennessee will have scored the most points against Alabama that they've had scored all year. As a matter of fact almost double but Alabama's had scored against them all year. Six by Georgia Tech and three by Vanderbilt. Our score, Alabama 27, Tennessee 17. But certainly Alabama has looked powerful after a stumbling, fumbling start. They fumbled and lost four of those fumbles in the first half. Second down and eight to go, Alabama. The clock is in their favor. Haney carrying the football and gets across the 45-yard line, or I should say the 40, near the 45-yard line, where White made the stop. Third down and short yardage and only two and a half minutes left. Well, Ken Willard, you never know what's going to happen, but this has been a, a fine football game and a lot closer than what the Alabama fans that I talked to thought it would be. I agree with you, Jim. I, I tell you, you have to be impressed with Alabama. They're just a great ball club, but you got to have all the respect in the world for a Tennessee team. They stuck it out. It's a young ball club, very thin. Alabama, however, has overcome its own mistakes. All of those fumbles. Intercepted passes, and there goes Jacobs trying to repeat his touchdown play, and it's good enough to get the first down and keep that clock rolling. They'll move the sticks with 1.59 to go. I can tell you one thing. That before they play another wishbone team, I would imagine that Tennessee will try to find out what Don Jacobs is keying off of in order to run that quarterback sneak so much. Well, next week, it is Rutgers homecoming for Tennessee. And then on November the 10th, Tennessee gets another big test. They get Notre Dame. Next week for Alabama, Virginia Tech also homecoming. And on November 10th, they get LSU. First down, Alabama. Jacobs on a pitch to Major Ogilvy, who's had an outstanding day, and there he goes again. Breaking tackles and out of bounds. First down at the 38-yard line. Major Ogilvy, well over 100 yards now. And he is not the workhorse. Well, I would think that Tennessee's very happy that Major doesn't carry the ball too much because I tell you, he's put on a show for us. He's almost got 100 yards, yeah, I would guess. Runs on the wall. And uh, he is just running the ball super. Ball is on the 38-yard line. One twenty-two. The clock stopped as Ogilvy stepped out of bounds. There is Haney showing some Haney speed. Right Sophomore from Rogersville. Now it's very tough on a defensive team at this part of the ball game. You know that uh, by all odds you should not be able to beat the team you're playing against. They're tired. It takes a lot of character to stay on the field and, and yet Alabama being the great team they are keep coming at you. You got to have a lot of empathy uh, at, for those people during this time of the game. Major Ogilvy scored two touchdowns today, has 109 yards and 13 carries. Second down and short yardage now for Alabama. And Jacobs still has the football. Hey, look at that 
straight arm. That's right out of Jack Armstrong, the All-American <laughs> boy. 35 <laughs> seconds to go. Alabama 27, Tennessee 17. Alabama about to its 15th in a row. That's the longest winning streak in the nation. They're 27th of the last 28 ball games and the sixth of this year. Tennessee will fall to four and two, but gave an outstanding performance today. As the clock continues to run before time ran out on Tennessee, their lack of depth began to tell. Jacobs has carried the ball for 47 yards, including a touchdown today. 10 and Jacobs and Alabama are in no hurry. They're glad to get out of this. Flag goes down. So much are they not in a hurry that it's going to be a five yard penalty. Jim, you're exactly right. They're really happy to be getting out of this stadium with their skin. Tennessee came out to play them. Everybody really didn't give give them much of a uh, chance against uh, against Alabama. But I tell you one thing, uh, you have to say they gave them uh, money's worth. I'll tell you another thing. When they show up in 1980 to play Tennessee again, Alabama will be properly respectful because this Tennessee team will be deeper and older and more experienced. And matter. <laughs> First down and 15 from the 25 yard line and jumping very quickly off is Steve Davis. Blank on the play. And they're saying it is because Tim Travis moved. So it'll be first down and 20 from the 30. All of this is very academic. It is at Tennessee at a 17 point lead and is going to lose by 10 27 to 17 barring a last minute score here of some kind on what may be the last play of the game and Jacobs is going to fall down to let it run out and the funny thing as he fell down the clock didn't start to run and it's just now started to run five seconds they'll count it down it's all over congratulations Johnny Majors of Tennessee and congratulations to Paul Bear Bryant has now won 290 ball games in his career. He's lost only 77. And Alabama, the number one team in the nation starting the day, is now 6-0. Our final score, the Crimson Tide of Alabama 27 and the Volunteers of Tennessee 17.